I even hit her home services, or do I come out and see the shot? Just do that. Just do that. Because I'm going to say, oh, my. The national anthem for Friday Night Rivals tonight is sponsored by South Carolina veterans, helping veterans and their families thrive. So we welcome you into Hanahan High School. Tonight's 2023 Preferred Home Services Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. We're about underway, folks. And before we do, how about our Cruz Chevrolet keys to the game? Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers, just North Northwoods Mall. You've got a friend at Cruz Chevy, two really talented bunchy. What do they got to do to get it done tonight? Yeah, obviously for Hanahan, first and foremost, they got to dominate the line of scrimmage, offense and defense, and also they got to win the turnover battle. That was part of the issues that they had in the loss to Berkeley, so protect the football. Lucy Beckham, trenches, trenches, trench. Got to win in the trench. More importantly, shine when the lights are the brightest. They really have not been tested this season. You have to expect and think tonight might be a little different. What will they do when that time comes? They haven't given up a point all season on defense ever. It's going to be really interesting moving forward tonight. If they are in a contest, how do they fare handling a little bit of adversity? But if we know anything about head coach Jamel Smith's team and those Beckham Bengals, they're going to be ready to go. Yeah, just hearing him in the warm-ups. Yeah, you can tell this guy is fiery. Those kids want to play for him. He believes in them, and they believe in him. And to get things underway, foot goes through ball, and it's Graham Thomas booting it away. Where Drew Goldsmith awaits and tries to bounce to the outside before he's tackled at around the 18. I believe that was number 25, Trevor Reynolds, the junior, wrapping up Goldsmith. That'll kick things off. Goldsmith will be the go-to guy in terms of wide receivers. For Hanahan had a big game against Berkeley, 100 yards receiving. He will be the top target for the Hawks. So we welcome you out. Take a good look. That's Julius Hippensteel, the young sophomore quarterback. Hippensteel, sent about 5'9", 160 pounds, a sophomore. When we talked to Coach Turner, kind of wise above his years at just a young 16 years old. Yeah, it was the starting JV quarterback. Didn't even expect to play varsity this year. The returning quarterback for Hanahan transferred to a different school. He was forced into action, and boy, has he excelled for the Hawks this year. I mean, Hippie still is going to drop it off. He has said his name. They find Goldsmith right away. It's Drew Goldsmith who actually leaves this team in targets and catches. Looking catches for 151 yards. Catch number 14 for just about a three-yard pickup, making it about second and seven. You take a look in alongside Hippensteel. His starting lineups are brought to you by Preferred Home Services. Go Preferred, the company highly referred. It's Hippensteel, Kayvon Rivera, who is the young stud running back in the backfield, joined with Bo Brabham, Landon Gomes, Drew Goldsmith, Game Dodderwich. It's going to be Landon Gomes as well. That's going to be another guy on the outside. They look to pitch it to the outside. And he tackled for about a loss. Now to Travis Neal. You know, Everett, I, I left a couple key pieces out when I was going over the starting lineups because Coach Turner, he told us that offensive front is going to be dangerous. But on the other side, for the Bengals, they look to continue a dominant start with Jaden Moore, Marshall Evans, and Daniel Fletcher. Those guys up front have been nasty. But in the backfield, pairing, catching with three interceptions already in this early 23 campaign. Drake Bull, Tyler Kinlock, Hank Pelly, Jackson Allison. He's got 13 tackles already coming out of that strong safety position. A defense that's truly super deep. And already big news for Hanahan. We've seen on this opening drive, Travis Neal, the running back for the Hawks. Pass intended. 
to Neal. We knew that there was a chance, Jack, that the stud running back, Kayvon Rivera, would not play. Got injured in the Berkeley game, went through the warm-ups, but as I look on the sideline, I see five on the sideline without his helmet on. That probably tells me he's not going to go tonight. He did. He played three quarters against the five-day Berkeley Stags a week ago. He took a shot right to that kneecap. He ended up not playing in the fourth quarter. He's been battling through it throughout the week. And it looks like he'll be Travis Neal's biggest supporter as he coaches him up on the sideline as we speak. In the meantime, it's Eric Johnson out to punt it away. And that ball's going to be booted in the end zone. Can he get rid of it in time? And he barely will. It's going to be about a 13-yard punt. He won't even get to the Beckham Bengals' first down marker. Has already some fireworks in the Bengals doing it in the third phase of the game. You know, we asked Coach Turner about special teams, and he said he was a little concerned about it. And we see here on the opening drive, he mentioned it. They have to win a turnover, not necessarily a traditional turnover, but in so many words it is as the Bengals will start this drive in outstanding field position. Chalmers Ballard, the junior quarterback, handing it away to Seegers. Seegers going to bounce it to the upside. A really nice tackle. We're going to say his name a lot tonight, folks. That's Hunter Gomes, the senior free safety, coming up and making the tackle after about a three-yard game of Seegers. Yeah, it'll be two Gomes that we'll talk about tonight. Hunter and his twin brother, Landon, both of them leading the defense uh, for the Hawks. The nice open field tackle for Hunter. Ballard goes right back to Seegers, Seegers makes one man miss until he's tackled. You can see the big fella holding on. It's Kalani Roberts, the nose tackle. Going to bring down Seegers just about two yards shy of the first down, but good enough to enter the TEC Equipment Rental Red Zone. TEC Equipment, we rip the good stuff. Due to that punt already, the Bengals threatening. Ballard's 32, joining the backfield with Seegers. Seager, excuse me, take a look at the rest of that offensive line. Saw your current receiver, Kelly. He's had the run, Trevor Reynolds, and the big fella, Bryce Rothwell. We're going to talk a lot about him. He's huge in the run game as Seager's is going to have enough for a first down to move the chains. A lot of names to talk about that Lucy Beckham offense, kind of pioneered by Chalmers Ballard. This, this will be the defense. Not too much preferred home service that'll look to slow down this lethal rushing attack. John Tumbury, Kalani Roberts, both guys that actually play on both sides of the ball. Antoine Mitchell, Jackson Stuckey, Jay Meadows. Meadows leads this defensive tackles. Keep an eye on him. Joshua Mara will round out that linebacker crew and a, a really strong group in the safety and backfield. Which Turner told us a lot about Hunter Gomes, Drew Goldsmith, Peyton Ortega. Tajay Hartwell, a lot of really big studs that are going to look to slow down. So uh, Chalmers Ballard, who's been really efficient in the passing game. Nice job by Jay Meadows, disrupting that play in the backfield. Seegers really had no way to run. Good stop for the Hawks defensively. Ballard looking for a fade in the back of the end zone. Can he get a foot in? He was looking for his man in the back end of the corner. Almost an unbelievable catch for Mason Ombre's foot on. Barely drag out of bounds. The Bengals, that's going to be an opportunity they wish they capitalized on. And both teams definitely, we talked about keys to the game, needing to be able to establish in the trench. Early on in this drive, Lucy Beckham has been the enforcer. But here in the past couple of plays, Hanahan's done a nice job of reestablishing that line of scrimmage in the backfield of the Bengals. Looks like we're going to get our first penalty of the game as the Bengals are going out of shotgun. It may have been a early movement on that Dead ball, front. ball start, offense number five, five yard penalty, third down. That's umpire Shane Roberts accurately pointed out that false start. Back the Bengals up to third and 16. Don't need a touchdown as they first down at just about the five yard line will continue the drive. The miscommunication on the outside and the Hawks get the stop they needed. The Hawks definitely will take that, considering that where this drive started for Lucy Beck. So a great job that we always talk about it, Jack, that bend but don't break, really kind of uh, limiting the Bengals, and now they'll have to settle for a field goal of attempt. And allow us to settle down up here. I feel like we got a little Daytona 500, a whole lot of action early in this contest as Graham Thomas will look to trot out and attempt what looks like it'll be a... We lined up around the 21, so you're looking at a... 37 yarder for Thomas. Hey, 
Boy, would this be huge for Hanahan after such a rough start offensively to be able to keep the Bengals off of the scoreboard should they be able to come up with either a block or a missed kick here. Thomas, the special teams captain, takes a step, fires away. That ball shot through the uprights. The Bengals, they scratch onto the board first. As the Bengals trot up, three nothing leaders, you see that ticker flying with them. We're gonna fly off with you. Take a quick break as they do. It's preferred home services, but at rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Welcome you back into Preferred Home Services. Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet here at the beautiful host site. The Hanahan Hawks they trail early. After a miscue on a punt, the Bengals kick that three point conversion of 37 yard from Graham Thomas. The Bengals get ahead early. Yeah, I mean, considering that they, uh, when that drive started, you couldn't ask for more. So I know obviously Coach Smith and the Bengals would have loved to have been able to punch it in, but they'll take the three and Again, just great shots all night long, all season long from our guys in the end zone. I was going to say, couldn't ask for more. We couldn't ask for a better crew and better sponsor. ABC News 4, Mike TD Charleston, and TEC Equipment Reynolds, making sure that our guys upstairs, the best camera crew in the country, are taken care of. And now the Hawks, led by first-year head coach, Mylon Turner. They look to take care of the ball a little bit more efficient. It'll be interesting to see. Do we see Keith on Rivera this time? I know it's one of those situations when you look on the sideline, he's got his helmet in his hand. So I'm thinking, no, you have to think big picture. Obviously, the kids' health is the utmost important a situation. So if he's not 100%, what you don't want to do is put him in danger of doing more damage uh, to that knee. And as a kid with lofty college aspirations, he's a really talented back. Coach Turner talked about, you know, in our interview with him this week, the importance of growing incredible young men and, from a football standpoint, just making sure you're ready to read your play. You know, and I had an opportunity to speak with Tom Gallus, the principal of Hanahan. He said, Everett, you will not meet a, a better young man uh, than Kayvon Rivera. He said he probably could run for mayor of Hanahan right now and probably would win. So those are the types of kids and student athletes that you love to highlight and talk about. See the young sophomore quarterback looking to bounce it to the outside. It's hip and steel for about a gain of seven. The youngster showing off the wheels. What we've seen from him and Steele thus far in the season, that birthday game, a one-point loss a couple of weeks ago, he can throw the football. And obviously, his top target is Drew Goldsmith, so he's proven that, hey, when I have to, I can. Tonight might be one of those situations if the Hawks can't get that run game going uh, here tonight. Still, like we mentioned, he's joining back for by Travis Neal. Neal, the junior running back, plays two ways, plays a lot of linebackers. Defense. He's hip and steel. He steps up in the pocket and finds a guy downfield. Just outside the outreached arms of Gabe Dodder, which kind of sees some alligator arms because that strong safety. It looked like it was Jackson Allison coach ready to lay the boom. I really want to give credit to that offensive line of Hanahan. They're allowing hip and steel to have a clean pocket. He was able to step up, take his time. Ball just sailed on him a little bit. But uh, again, the offensive line doing a great job of giving him time thus far. Robert Myers and Jackson Allison breaking up that pass. And now it's going to be hip and steal. About third and four. Bengals showing blitz. Hip and steal looking to check down, maybe make an audible. 
trying to move the chains and he hands it to Neal. Neal finds a hole, extends for that first down. They saw something at the line of scrimmage and they immediately check down. They make the right call and they move the sticks. And a hand clip just out. Outstanding adjustment there on that third down. Tate, Jack, two outstanding coaching staffs uh, on this play tonight. Obviously, we know what Coach Smith is doing at Lucy Beckham in his second year. Coach Turner in his first year coming from Georgia Southern. Uh, he's doing a great job uh, here for Hanahan. Really doing a nice job of building culture. Oh, they find Goldsmith on a screen, and Jackson Allison doesn't make an incredible tackle on the outside. Goldsmith, he's got a ton of room to run. I told you Goldsmith's a true speedster. Just six foot, 150 pounds, he can really fly. Has even taken a couple of visits to Charleston Southern just right down the road. He's got next level speed. You gotta tell you what, yeah, get him an open field and let him make plays, but you're right. That was a big time tackle. That's one of those film study tackles. He saw something on film, he knew the play was coming, and able to blow up uh, that particular play. Allison actually leading this bank of defense and tackles at 13, nine of which assist four of which solo. You don't see that a ton of that strong safety spot. Really athletic dude in the backfield. When we talk about athleticism though, it's been this front four for the Bengals that's allowed them to get off such a strong start in this early 23 campaign. Five white jerseys around the football. We heard Coach Smith talk about it. Get to the football when you get there, be angry, be bothered. Get team tackling, that's what this defensive Lucy Beckham does. Again, still they've not given up a point yet this season and we're into what? Two games in one quarter thus far. Not a touchdown. Not a point. Not a, point. Not a field goal for this defense. And it starts up front. Jaden Moore, Marshall Evans, and Drake Bull have been spectacular in that 3-4 scheme. Now, hip and steal. Third down. He's got a guy downfield. He's got one man to beat. It's Landon Gomes. How about the toss from hip and steal? On third and six, he finds Landon Gomes, the first points delivered. We jinxed them upstairs in the Bengals. They find themselves trailing after an absolute dart from Julius Hippensteel to the senior, Landon Gomes, his second touchdown of the season. Yeah, that tried technical touchdown. What a job by Hippensteel. He knew he was going to get hit, kept his eyes on the field, able to deliver it to Gomes, and Gomes just showing off his speed, able to outrun the defense, the secondary of the Bengals, and I'm sorry, Bengal fans, literally the next play they give up Touchdown. That might be on us. And Coach Jamal Smith, when they go back and look at tape, they're going to talk about us upstairs. But let's more so talk about Landon Gomes, who came into this one with six catches for 69 yards. He doubles that. About a 65-yard catch and run. But the dart from the young sophomore Julius Hippensteel growing up in front of our eyes. We mentioned that he was going to have to throw the football tonight because he doesn't have the services of his running back. What a play by the Hawks. We're going to let the maturation, the beautiful toss, and delivery from Julius Hippensteel take us to break. A shootout already. The Hannon Hawks lead 7 to 3. Brought to you by Preferred Home Services, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. into the low country, Jack Longshaw, alongside Everett German. Everett, the ultimate broadcaster jinx on display. We did lose back in dirty. Hitter, usually give up a, give up a hit. And that time, literally Jack, we just mentioned, hadn't given up a point. Next play, a bomb and a touchdown for the Hawks. 
Eric Johnson looking to boot it away. It's going to be number three, Mason Ombres, to return. Out past the 25, bounce it to about the 35-yard line. It was brought down by Drew Goldsmith on the outside. We joke about the jinx, but so much talk and emphasis when you do film study on this hand hand bench because Kayvon Rivera has been that good. Not in the lineup tonight. And how does the young sophomore stand up immediately in this game? The confidence he's still in that side on next level. Well, and also Travis Neal. He's backing up, uh, obviously, Rivera, who can't go tonight. So he's going to have to step his game up as well. But I agree, Julius Hippen Steele, he's going to have to be the leader of this team. He's the quarterback sophomore. Opportunity for him to really earn his stripes tonight. The Bengals looking to get back on attack. Strong Hanahan defensive front showing. That was the big fellow number 70, Antoine Mitchell. You're going to shout out those guys too, because Coach Turner told us before the game this week hey man, there's a lot of attention on Rivera, but that offensive front, Jonathan Tumbry, Kalani Roberts, Trey Summers, Antoine Mitchell, and Rhett Bagwell, they're the reason that he's so good. That offensive line that also kind of doubles on the defensive side of the ball has been spectacular. But how do the Bengals respond? With Chalmers Ballard on a perfect slant to his guy. Are you kidding me? Mason Ombres on the outside. A great little pitch and catch. And Ombres darts for about 45. It looked like it wasn't going to be an explosive play. He was able to break a tattle, tackle and explode in that hand-to-hand -hand red zone. Well, that's why you have to make sure you wrap up. You know, that's one thing at all levels of football that we've seen, Jack, is sometimes lack of tackling. Guys looking to blow guys up. you got to wrap up and get them on the ground. Homer is able to take advantage of it. Thank you. Back to Steven Seegers. He's so nonchalantly, casually spoke through just a really perfect little stick route. And Ombres, who entered today, five catches for about 60 yards, a touchdown in the contest last week against the Warriors. He and Chalmers Ballard, you can kind of see that chemistry on display. Holding, numbers, numbers, offense number two. Guard penalty, out of the foul. First down. Tough run there by Seegers, but it's going to be negated by a holding penalty. You look at Seegers, I just love how he always seems to run behind his pads. He's always falling forward. Very rarely do you see him fall backwards. That's what you want to see in a running back if you're a head coach. Go back to the outside of first and 15 after the holding call. Looks like he dumped it to the outside. That's number 16, Henry Rosie. Senior slot receiver. Hunter Gomes on the stop. Seems like Jack will be saying the Gomes brothers' names a lot tonight. Twins. Landon. Old seniors, obviously. Meantime, Ballard to the outside. Really nice pitch and catch to Trevor Reynolds. He talked about the twin brothers. We, we kind of thought of a couple of different nicknames for them. I'm sure they've got a ton. But obviously, the big pitch and catch, they're so crucial in that secondary for the Hawks. Yeah, and that being said, also, you know, they're used to defending. It kind of runs in their family. As we found out, Jack, their dad is the chief of police in uh, North Charleston. So it's a defensive family. Not a whole lot of defense on that play as Bryce Rothwell went right up the seam, slipped directly into the end zone, and just threw the wickets. A really nice ball from Chalmers Ballard. But look at the leadership. You can see, obviously, Rothwell so important in the run game. He's got great hands as well. That's just a play that he's going to want to forget. I love to see the leadership about going and picking him up. And they often say the hardest uh, <laughs> pass to catch is the one where you're that wide open. You no, know, it seems like it's up in the air forever and ever. And as a result now, the Bengals will once again have to settle for a field goal attempt. William Thomas, you see, it's going to be up. It looks like it's actually wide right. Graham Thomas, who's been nothing but excellent. He's been perfect on the season, but he misses that. Just really a chip shot for him, as it was about a 32-yarder. He had plenty of leg, but just pushed it right. Yeah, one of those situations where sometimes things just, you know, it's just one of those nights. He was able to knock the first one through, second one not as much. But I'm sure there's no doubt. Coach Smith, also you saw a good look at Jimmy Noonan the special teams coordinator for Lucy Beckham. They have the utmost faith in him, and should that situation present itself again, there's no doubt in my mind that he'll bang it through 
the uprights. So not able to capitalize on the easy pick and catch. Chalmers Ballard and Mason Ombres. And you take a look at first year head coach Milan Turner. He's got the pedigree. Big time college football program in Georgia Southern just a year ago. Now pioneering, kind of galvanizing this Hawks program. You can see them responding in a huge way. How about another big way? Perrin catching. It was all over. That pass to Drew Goldsmith. Catching who's already got three interceptions in the year, just nearly misses number four. I think he has an eye for the football. Does a great job of reading the quarterback's eyes. And that's one thing you normally don't see a lot in high school football, especially is looking their receivers off. If you want to throw left, you know, look right, then throw left. But a lot of times high school quarterbacks will just stare their receiver down and it allows the safeties an opportunity to break on the uh, particular pass. That time, not able to come up with his fourth interception. Off to Neal. He's going to be met by a flurry of Bengals defenders as he'll pick up just about a yard. Hawks are looking about 39. It was Goldsmith, the intended receiver on that fly route down the sideline. Catch it. Jumped in the way. Goldsmith with the 13 catches. You can see he's going to be trailed across the middle of the field by the talented middle linebacker Tyler Kimball. Yeah, a lot of attention being paid to Goldsmith. You'll probably see a lot of cover two safeties shading his way. They don't want him to be able to kind of get off and have another big night. Pippen still looks to evade the pocket. He's wrapped up in the backfield. A really nice play by the junior backer, Hank Apelli. Looks like there's a penalty late in the play as he had them all wrapped up. Not sure what they saw. It could have been hands in the face as number 75 in front of the Hanahan, Jonathan will be on the Hawks. The Bengals are Offense number 54. This penalty is declined. Fourth down. Yeah, Jaden Moore and Jaquan Evans as well for the Bengals. Really did a nice job of applying pressure. Forced the scramble. Did not give up on the play. Got a little chippy there at the end. A little pushing and shoving. But that's what you like to see. Playing hard. Given maximum effort, and if there's two teams in the low country that I know will play hard and give maximum effort, it's the two on display tonight. There's a level of physicality from both sidelines as you see head coach Milan Turner. He's a guy that brings a lot of energy. And we had Jamel Smith before. He coaches with so much passion. It's contagious. You know that this ball game, go chip the early, ever you love to say it. Don't play emotional. Just play with emotion. Clearly, the team's not a lot of passion. So that time on. Better kick by the kicking team of Hanahan as Eric Johnson able to get that punt off rugby style. Got a nice friendly roll, and once again, the Bengals will start in Hawk territory. This just the second season of varsity football. The second team All American linebacker who played his collegiate football in Virginia Tech under Bud Foster. We talked about how important Foster was kind of in his football journey is Charles Bird. Looks like he was wrapped up, bounces to the outside for about 16 yard gain. Charles Bird, just a season ago, tearing his ACL. He looks stronger than ever. That particular run looks to tear the Hawk defense apart. Nice job using the stiff arm, able to bounce outside and make a mad dash down the sideline. Another physical run. We talked about the three head monster. This is monster number two. No pun intended. This is jersey number, it's number two, but yes, to see here and now. Uh, he'll have an opportunity to show what he can do toting the football. Dead ball, encroachment, like offense number 74, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, first down. Number 74, that left tackle, saw he was lined up off sides. He's talking about Charles Berdy. He almost feels disrespectful to call either he or Robert Myers back up backs because their production this year has been spectacular. They'll go back to the ground with Charles Bird. He's met by a flurry, a huge hit. Antoine Mitchell, Bird's only about to pick up one. The Bengals looking about second and 14. And it seems like all night long thus far, Lucy Beckham will do something good, and then they'll kill themselves with the penalties. So after the big run by Bird, now, as you see, second down and long coming up uh, for the Bengals. Ballard in the backfield. He steps up. He's got a guy on the outside, and it's his main man, Mason Ombres. Oh, Bridges, third catch already this evening. That connection, they're firing all cylinders right now. 
Nothing fancy there, just a 10 yard curl. And 10, come back. Nice delivery with the pass. And that makes it a more manageable third down for the Bengals as it looks like it's about third and five. Ballard starting to really get comfortable in this game. He's got home Braze, number 16, Henry Braze in the bottom of the screen at the top. It's number 25, Trevor Reynolds. Joining the back there with Charles Bird as the Bengals face 35. A little fade to the back of the end of it's home Braze battling on the outside with number nine, Tajan Hawkwell. Hawkwell fights him out of bounds. The Hawks, what's another fourth down? Just right outside the red zone. Let's see, they're going to attempt a field goal. Yeah, because their offense is running off the field. Kind of like they're in no man's land. But they're going to give it another shot. We saw him last. He's clearly got the leg in the distance, Graham Thomas, as he lines up. From the same spot on the right hash mark. I was going to say, that ball's going to be spotted at 25. He's got a 42 yard race. Great for Thomas. Snaps good, holds clean. That ball, this time, straight through the uprights. A really nice kick from Graham Thomas. Cut that deficit to just one. And that shows the confidence that Jamel Smith has in his kicker. He missed the second one, had no hesitation. Same situation uh, that we talked about. Ran him out there and able to pick up three for the Bengals. Just 40 seconds to go here in this first quarter. It feels like we haven't been able to catch our breath upstairs as we take a look at the Wayside band, that Beckham band, and quite a bit to cheer for. It's been a roller coaster first quarter for the Mexico's lunch. Now, I want to talk about, Jack, just the community for both of these areas. Hanahan doing a great job. Coach Turner, you mentioned about, has really changed the culture here at Hanahan. A lot of excitement. The eyes want to play football. The stands are packed. And then, of course, in East Cooper, what Coach Smith has done with Lucy Beckham, people are proud to wear bingo football gear and, and really kind of bring that Mount Pleasant community together. So, safe to say, both of these communities are in good hands with these two guys at the helm. Can you speak to me how difficult it is. He started this program four years ago. This is just the second season of varsity football. And they're already competing with powerhouses in the world. Well, it's easy to get guys to come out when you're winning. And when kids like you, and you're energetic, and you're passionate, and kids know that you care about them as people, not just athletes, then yeah, you're going to get the most out of them. And that's what Coach Smith, I've always heard great things about him, even when he was an assistant at Wando, now uh, in charge at Lucy Beck. Boots it away to the dangerous landing, Gomes. Gomes with a cutback at about the 25, and he kicks it. He's getting it all the way nearly to that 50-yard marker. And Landon Gomes, go ahead. He said, flash me that money. A little Johnny Manziel, maybe not. Landon Gomes, he's been the playmaker in just the first quarter. How about the cutback? Able to cut back. He saw all the, the uh, traffic flowing to the left. Almost stopped on a dime. Came left. Able to get through that hole. Switched hands. Put the ball in the outside hand, which that's what you talk to in the event that the ball goes out of bounds. So a very impressive run. Here's we take a look here. Gomes using his field vision and right there he sees the hole and he explodes left. Switches the uh, hands and off to the races. He goes outstanding field position for the Hannah Hay Hawks. Third phase of the game, really paying dividends for the Hawks as it's hip and steal. Out of around the 47. Provide a little bit more insurance. Ooh, man, he had Landon Gomes wide helping out in the flats. But a miscommunication in the secondary for the Bengals. It's going to be a throw that hit and steal. Wish he had that. Great play by Hanahan. They motion Gomes. He then reverses and then kind of angles off to the sideline. That's one of those situations, Jack, you want to put a little air, float that ball out there and allow Gomes to go get it. He kind of threw him a fastball. You're right. In a year or two, that's a play he'll make with ease. The sophomore still learning on the job. Under Strader, the big time tight end checks in. Looking to be maybe a little bit of rock block. As you see, they pull him. A screen, bubble screen to the outside. It's Gabe Donnerwich. Donnerwich gets to the corner. Not sure if he's going to have enough for a first down. That bubble screen looked like he was going nowhere. Sprung for about an eight yard game. You know who won't get credit for that, but definitely made that play happen? Bo Branham. The sophomore wide receiver, number 17, with the huge block to free up his teammate to come up with that screen and pick up a first down. Downfield blocking, that's a lost art for wide receivers. They, not only do you have to run and catch, but you also have to be able to shadow block and make plays for your teammates. When you talk about the selfless play from the Hawks, this is going to be the first quarter that they dreamed of. No Kayvon Rivera, no problem. 
Coach Mylon Turner's group. They're going to take it to the second quarter of this preferred home services. Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet as the Hawks, they lead the Bengals 7-6. Host school grant this week is sponsored by Preferred Home Services. And News 4 are proud to present each participating home school with a check for $500. This grant provides each school with extra funding to help make their school great. Over the past 13 seasons, Friday Night Rivals and our sponsors have donated over $140,000 to low country students and schools. Congratulations from Preferred Home Services and News 4. In the meantime, we kick it down to Trooper Bob with the check presentation. That's right, 500 dollars for Hanahan High School. But I'm here with the principal for Hanahan, Tom Gallus. How will this money help the school? Well, we're going to dedicate this money to our growest, our largest growing population of our school, our ML population, to help give them the resources so they can be successful in all their classes. Excellent. Thank you very much, sir, Mr. Gallus. Now, too, what we love to do week to week is obviously highlight our educator spotlight as well. Trooper Bob, guys over at the Thumbs Up Guys, your personal injury attorneys at Miller, Dawson, Siegel, and Ward, winning cases and winning your trust. I think we're going to head back to with Trooper Bob as we kind of highlight some incredible educators really influencing our youth, especially here at Hanahan High School. The school year, what are some of the exciting things you're doing here at Hanahan? Man, this is a great school. We have so many kids that are involved in, in activities, whether that's fine arts or uh, volleyball, tennis, extracurricular activities. The community support here is unbelievable, as you can tell by the people here in the stands tonight. I have to ask you, so the cheerleaders in the student section now have their safety vests on. I could have used them last week with the tropical storm. Tell me more about that. Yeah, maybe you can go up there and join them there. Uh, it's a construction theme. They have a theme every, every week, and, uh, you know, the community again is bought in and it's great to see our students here and cheering on the Hawks supporting the cheerleaders the band everybody it's great always a great time here at Hanahan thank you very much I'll send it back to you guys Trooper Bob those construction uniforms have got something to cheer about it's Drew Goldsmith on the dime from Julius Hippensteel the long ball serving the Hawks well tonight as you can see that speed of Drew Goldsmith burn past the second of the Bengals for the second long touchdown of the night for the Hawks. You talk about dropping it in the basket. What a throw from Hip and Steel to Drew Goldsmith. That guy absolutely got past the secondary. Lucy Beckham's gonna have to make some adjustments. They're gonna have to back some of those guys up because right now, Lucy Beckham has no answer for the passing game of Hannah Hanks. And it almost looks like a little bit of miscommunication in that backfield is Drew Goldsmith. This is the third touchdown of the season. 
that big time bomb. That eclipsed over 200 yards in the season. Big time pass and catch. Julius Hippies in this contest. 260 yards. Actually, it wasn't a touchdown. They're going to say he was down at the one, Jack. So an opportunity for the Hawks to punch it in here. Might be going for two, he is. It looks like it's Travis Neal. Still no change on the scoreboard. I, must be master teams on my end. It looked like Goldsmith had gotten in. Yeah. I think they're saying that knee just short of the goal line is the Hawks going to barrel one in as they're down at the one. Well, Jack, if it's one thing that we know that just because the ball's on the one yard <laughs> line is not guaranteed to score a touchdown. So uh, the Hawks still have some work to do here. Big time push up front as they run behind the big fella, Kalani Roberts, waiting for the signal, and it's good. The Hawks pile it in. They extend their lead. Now, finally, that touchdown brought to you by Trident Technical College. Your future, your college. And that student section's got something to really stand on their feet for. Yeah, Hanahan is building something special here. The passing game on display tonight. The first win for Hanahan was all running. The second game, the loss to Berkeley was passing. So far, so good. The Air Hawks are putting on a display. <laughs> I think he's a little overzealous. I thought Goldsmith got in, but obviously Hippensteel's going to pass it all the way down there. He wanted to hold on to it. Trooped his way into the end zone, and that PAT from Eric Johnson is good. A little miscommunication all right, but don't worry. The Hawks, they take care of business. Hanahan piles into the end zone. They extend that lead for 14 to 16. It's been all Hawks. This is 2023 Preferred Home Services. Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Back into the low country, Jack Longsaw. Jack Longsaw. You know, I did that earlier today, Everett. My own last name is tough to say. I was about to say, if anyone knows your last name, it's probably you. It should be me. <laughs> Jack DeLongshaw is fumbling on his words up here, but I'm telling you right now, it's Julius Hippensteel firing all cylinders. And you got to know first year head coach Miles Turner, he's got to be stoked about the performance of his young sophomore. Yeah, he's not tripping over anything because his team offensively and defensively, let's not forget, this is a high powered. Lucy Beck offense, a team that can run the football. We saw flashes of them throwing the football in the win against Wando as well. So right now, offense, defense, special teams outside of that first possession for the Hawks. Everything going Hanahan's way. But as we know, Jack, there's still plenty of football left to be played. Everett, let me ask you this as Eric Johnson looks to boot it away. I got to imagine everyone in the stadium tonight was expecting a whole lot of Kayvon Rivera because that's what this offense has looked like this season. A defense that hasn't surrendered a point all season has given up 14 in just close to 12 minutes of play. Do you think they're maybe taken aback by the ability through the air of Hippensteel? Well, they probably shouldn't because if they saw the tape against Berkeley, they should have known that he could throw the football. And I know Coach Smith and his staff did see that. So maybe it's just a matter of just some adjustments. We talked about it. The lights are on now. What are you going to do when it's shining bright? A little adversity here, but you're still a one-possession game. Take your time. You don't have to start you know, throwing it all over the field. Continue to play Lucy Beckham football offensively, which is getting the ball to five, getting the ball to two, and letting those guys ground and pound it down the field. Mason Umbrez powered through with a 20-yard return to about the 45-yard line. And you're right. They trail by just one score. It's an eight-point lead for the Hawks. It's Chalmers Ballard, joined by Steven Seavers in the backfield. Ballard dropped the pass far off side of the field to Trevor Reynolds. Good enough for about a four-yard gain. 
and E2. We talked about it. it was one of your keys in the game. They haven't played in a closely contested matchup. Now how do they handle a little bit of adversity and resiliency? And you know and Coach Mel Smith well. This team will bounce back in the big way. And I'm not so sure that Coach Smith is not happy with the situation. Again, obviously you never want to be losing, but this is an opportunity to really coach this team up and get them ready for the rest of this game. Ooh, how about the jet sweep? Cut back upfield from Charles Bird. Bird, about a seven-yard pickup, good enough for a first down. You know, a lot of times you look at running backs, you, know, you may have a thunder, you may have a lightning. With these guys, both of them, well, I guess your thunder would be Seager's, your lightning is Charles, but both of those guys, big, physical uh, running backs for the Bengals. Right now, they're going to go back to the ground. How about the stiff arm? Almost gets away with a second. Stephen Seegers running angrily down the field. I mean, you have to think Seegers has watched or YouTubed a couple of Mike Allstott videos <laughs> in terms of running the football, being physical, you know, the, the have the guns out. Seegers just runs so hard. Man, I tell you what, that kid, he has a chance at the next level just because of how hard he runs with the football. That pitches it to the outside. It's Seegers. He hits the gap, and he explodes to the outside. Well, you gave him the Tampa Bay analogy. I don't know if Alistot's running that fast as Steven Seegers. That, his sixth touchdown of the year, and Steegers cuts that deficit to just two as the Bengals right back in it almost immediately. Okay, so Seegers <laughs> said, oh, I am lightning as well as thunder. Again, I just was talking about that, but great speed by Seegers, able to get around the corner, get around that end, and once he got down the sideline, there was no stopping number five. That's how you answer a big play from Hannah. You can see a little bit of a muddle huddle. The Bengals trail by two. It is Graham Thomas running out late as Mason Ombres is waiting on him. The entire offensive line shifted over to the left. A little trickeration here? Hey, well, no, they're going to shift to their normal setup. Of course, we saw the trickery against Wando that had a lot of success. That's something you just want to put on film so that the opponent has to prepare for it. Thomas lines up, takes one step, fires away. Almost nails the scoreboard as the Bengals. They cut back to one. Steven Seegers, who entered tonight with 127 yards per game, 9.1 yard a carry, with the 52 yard dash, and it cuts the Bengals' deficit to just one. So we had to break. in the Hanahan High School. Everett, you said he brought the thunder. It was the lightning. That big time cutback from Steven Seegers cuts this Bengal deficit to just one. They're right back in it. Been very impressed tonight with both teams and their playmakers and their ability to see the field and use their explosiveness. Both teams putting it on display tonight. Passing, running. This is exactly what we expected, Jack, from these two uh, teams tonight. Two solid football teams. Definitely two of the better teams in the low country right now they're putting on a show now one thing to look at jack both of these teams have a lot of kids that play both ways offense defensively very emotional first quarter i mean it seems like we should almost be in the third quarter with all the action we still got eight minutes to go in the second so you got to be able to preserve some of that emotion or it's going to be a long night for these dj or these two teams it's got preserve it's been an unbelievable roller coaster event upstairs for us you see Graham Thomas getting ready to boot it away. Really, really interesting during this kickoff. i got to ask you your opinion. How important is it, the fact, I think Hanahan especially, probably more so on the offensive and defensive line with guys playing both ways. That's 
It's going to trickle out of bounds at around the six-yard line. The Hawks will take it out at around 35. Yeah, we know how physical Lucy Beckham is. Those guys want to lay a hat on a hat. Not that Hanahan is not, but in terms of physical size, Lucy Beckham a little bigger. So, yeah, expect the, the Bengals to wear down uh, Hanahan. But then again, it's been so many big plays. They've not really had to exert, you know, too much uh, effort here in terms of long, sustained drives for either team offensively. She did a great look at that Hanahan student section. Talked about the pride in this football program. Talked about the culture of Coach Turner. How were they able to implement that so quickly? He's getting kids to buy in, you know, and, and that's so important, especially when you can get your upperclassmen to buy in and be leaders. And he talked about he lost three starters from last year's Hanahan team that transferred to different schools that he was kind of relying on and didn't get a chance. So give credit to these young men of Hanahan for stepping up and taking the, the most, making the most of their opportunities. And that's why, you know, that culture is firmly set here. The communities behind Hanahan. The players, the school, this is the Hanahan football program trending upwards for sure. You see Graham Thomas, after that first kick trickled out of bounds, it was offsetting Petsies, so they, a little bit of a do-over. Thomas opts for the squid kick, corralled by Hunter Gomes. It's Gomes twins, it just feels like they're always around the football. He takes a knee and the Hawks will take over at the 30. Yeah, one of those situations where it's a Gomes, <laughs> when there's a football game going on at Hanahan, there's going to be a Gomes somewhere <laughs> on the field. You know, it was interesting. Coach Turner, I was sort of telling us a little bit about Hunter Gomes. He didn't play football last season, and he's a super athlete. So it's like he, they had to kind of force a million miles an hour to really start to slow down, allow him to just be an athlete in that Hawks second game. There's Neil out of the backfield on the pitch to the outside. It looks like he got about a game of two. Zip and steal. And obviously, you know, from a defensive standpoint, that's probably one of the easiest ones. See ball, go get ball, tap the guy with the ball. And when you're an athlete, you know, just naturally you pick things up. So that's what Gomes has done, uh, you know, thus far. See in the backfield it is Travis Neal, two-way player. Zip and steal puts in the chest of Neal and takes it back out. A little bit of a read option. He was looking for twin brother Landon Gomes on the outside. A throw behind him. A couple little extracurriculars after the play as Gomes is upset with maybe no late hit call, but it was parent catching and coverage. You know how special the athlete catching is. Well, he couldn't really get his feet set because he had Jade Moore breathing down his neck. So because of the pressure of being applied by Moore, that forced the bad throw. You want to get that one in front of your wide receiver, kind of thrown behind him. So a big third down coming up for the Hawks. And talk about momentum swings, Jack. Boy, if the Bengals can force a three and out here and get the football back to that red hot offense, you gotta feel Jamil Smith would be very happy with that. They can steal on the Hawks facing about a third and ten. The Bengals showing a four-man blitz. See Jake Moore's got four tackles for loss in the sack of the season. He jumps early. Curious to be a free play, and they'll call it dead before the snap count. And you have to think that. The Bengal defensive staff. Those guys are challenging that secondary. You don't see you see one safety high, but a lot of man-to-man -man on the outside. You see man-to-man -man coverage right here uh, on Goldsmith. So let's see if Hip and Steel can take advantage of that. And from a defensive standpoint, let's see if these guys rise to Dead the ball. occasion ball right start. now. Offense number 62, five-yard penalty, third down. Perrin Ketchen getting the honors of matching up one-on-one -on -one with Goldsmith. Yeah, we were curious. There were a lot of question marks in here. I feel like there's been a lot of moments tonight of up in the air. That time it was Jaden Moore on the outside lined up with just a young sophomore, really talented right tackle, Cam Raymond. Head official Shane Roberts, Kyle Bokowski, head linesman on the far side of the field. Was Luke Sears, the umpire. And referees tonight said it was Raymond that jumped. Now hip and steel, third and long. They're looking for Goldsmith, and they won't find him, but another yellow hanky. Curious if they're going to get a late hit or if it's going to be a hold in the backfield. This is a crucial third down penalty. I think it's going to be holding, thrown in the area of holding. Let's see what Kyle says. No, it is indeed going to go against Lucy Beckham. As Personal foul. You were right. the passer with targeting. Defense number 19. This 15-yard penalty includes an automatic first down. 
Wow. And if you're Coach Smith and that defensive staff of the Bengals, that's a big play because instead of being fourth down and getting the ball, now it's an automatic first down for Hannah Hand. It goes back to what we say, Jack. You got to play with emotion, but you can't play emotional. That's a, a costly penalty. This will extend the drive for the Hawks. I commend the play. That's Drake Bull. Bull, who's got a sack and four and a half tackles for a lock, just playing really aggressive, but maybe just a hair late after it left the hands of Hip and Steel. Crucial third and 15 penny to extend the drive for the Hawks is a little bit of a personnel change up front. Yeah, the Hawks doing a great job of keeping those guys fresh. Obviously, when you're going both ways, offense and defense, you're going to wear down. This is a very physical game tonight, two outstanding football teams. So, yeah, go in for three or four plays, come out, get your breather, and just keep that cycle going. Coach uh, Turner did say that it doesn't matter. He's got 10 guys that he can rotate at any time on the trenches, offense and defensive line, and feel comfortable with it. You can still join in the backfield again by Travis Neal. By the way, love the no gloves, no tape for Travis Neal. Super gritty. Junior back will take the handoff, and he's met almost immediately in the backfield. That was number 32, the outside backer, Hank Appley. Appley, that's his eighth tackle of the season. Huge play to force the third, about six. We talk about reestablishing those line of scrimmages. Who was going to win the trenches? It seems like it literally goes from play to play. One play, Hanahan gets it. Next play is Lucy Beckham. So now this is third down. That front four of Lucy Beckham has done a nice job of really getting pressure on the hip and uh, steel. We've seen what he can do when he has plenty of time. Let's see what happens here. They go to the play action. He fakes it. It's hip and steel on the outside. He gets a block by number 22. A great block by Hunter Strader. Boy, what an aggressive, gritty run. He lowers the shoulder, does hip and steel, and it looks like he's going to have enough for the first down. And if he doesn't make that spin at the end, he may not pick up the first down. So a heads-up play from hip and steel to pick up that one additional yard that was dealing. But you're looking at him right now. He kinda, he's hurt a little bit. He's walking around, hand on the hips. He took a big hit that time. Let's see if he can play through that big hit. I was going to say, that's the captain middle linebacker. That's Jaquan Evans. Came into the contest with seven tackles, fourth of the team. He's that captain of that yes. defense for a reason. He laid the boom on what was really a wide-open hip and steel target. You best believe. Them Bengal defenders, they're coming <laughs> to hit you. They take the attitude of their head coach. They are not playing games when they get to the football. I was going to say, look for... Coach Mel Smith, obviously second team All-American linebacker at Virginia Tech. He gave us maybe the line of the season. Get to the at, get to the football in a bad mood. Yeah. Kind of one of those situations like, why did you make me run all the way over here to get you? So now you're going to have to pay the price for making me run sideline to sideline. But, yeah, that's the one thing about this Bengal defense. Pursuit, swarming to the football, everybody uh, team tackling. And, again, make sure the opponent feels you when you get to the football. Right now it's been the secondary with some question marks. This is a really talented backfield. Robert Myers parent catching Jackson Allison, Henry Goldsmith in the secondary right now. Can they make the proper adjustments as it looks like a really nice snap count? Hip and steel playing with the cadence and the tempo. Dead ball. Looks like you got the big ball Marshall Evans to jump Defense off Defense number 19, yeah. five-yard penalty. Normally the, normally the saying is, if it's free, I'll take three. In this situation, if it's free, I'll take five. So now this is a much, much more manageable second down play here, second down, and might as well say five. This is obviously a situation where you can run it or throw it. I would love to see a screen out the backfield. This pressure has been uh, heavy on hip and steel. Allow the defenders to come right on in and go right over their heads, whether it be in the middle or over there in the uh, open space, and see if you can hit a big play down the field. Again, he's got trips out to the bottom of the screen. Let's see if they do take a shot. He fakes the pitch, dives for about a three-yard gain, or he's tackled by aforementioned defensive end Drake Bull to make it a much more third and manageable. Tried to get him with a little misdirection here. Wanted to get that flow going right, and then hip and steel comes back left. A positive play. But a huge third down, and you have to think of your hand to hand with four minutes left here in the first half. You want to take as much time off this clock as possible, and if you can, be the last person to touch the football here in the first half. 
I heard the public address announcer correctly. I think it's an official's timeout, as clearly both teams have all three timeouts on their back pockets, as this has been a speedy first half. Allows both of them to kind of reset, like you said, a really crucial third and short. Yeah, I see Kyle Boczkowski sitting there talking to the head coach. So, and now Hanahan. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with hip and steel. Because he, he, he continues to kind of hold that side. Maybe they just want to make sure he's okay. I think initially it was an official timeout. Now Hanahan will take the extra time and call one of their own. They still have two with just 4.05 left in the second quarter. Jack DeLongshaw alongside Everett German. Uh, kind of the first half we expected. We talked about it in the open. We didn't want to sound cliche, but this was the matchup we had circled. Really highly anticipated. Hanahan got the best of the Bengals a year ago, looking for a little vengeance on the road this year. Yeah, and of course we saw what Hanahan did in week one. Obviously the big numbers, then a tough loss against Berkeley. Is, please see, Jack, let's, let's wave to our guys over there in the, in the truck. Uh, there in the end zone but yeah so a situation where you kind of you know you see scotty eisberg with the highlights you're like okay hanahan's decent and we knew obviously about lucy beckham preparing for them two weeks ago so yeah this is the game that i think you and i had uh circled and even next week we'll have another solid one as we'll get to see james allen for the first time and a lot of people seem to think james allen could be the best team here in the low country he looks off to the right, a big-time blitz, and he's met. It's the nose tackle. How about Marshall Evans? Evans with his first sack of the season. That's a huge one on third down. I thought it was going to be four down territory, but with the huge sack from the senior Evans, now all of a sudden head coach Milan Terry's got a decision to make. Yeah, it looks like he's going to send the punt team out as Eric Johnson on the field to punt it away. Kind of surprised that the Bengals didn't take a timeout here. They got three left. They're going to get the ball back. We've seen, obviously, the Bengals be able to throw the football as well, but they're going to let this clock uh, kind of go out as Hanahan is trying to shorten what's left of this first half with a little over three and a half minutes. Save all three timeouts for junior quarterback Chalmers Ballard. This the two-minute drill that he and I'm sure offensive coordinator Christian Hart practiced endlessly throughout the summertime, two a days. Now the Bengals will be pairing catching the electric athlete, two-way star, stud baseball player for the Bengals. He awaits the booming punt from Eric Johnson. And of course, Johnson is a rugby style kicker, so he's hoping to get a nice little roll here and pin the Bengals. Fires it away, a spinning, spiraling punt. It takes an advantageous hawk bounce before they down it around the six-yard line. A great punt from Eric Johnson. That's going to back this Bengal aerial attack back to the six-yard line. It'll be really interesting. E2 this is obviously an offense that loves to run the football with 2.45 to go in the second quarter. Do you expect them to kind of start throwing right away? Do you have time to rush the football through the middle of the field? Hey, the way Seegers <laughs> and those guys run the football, they could pop one off at any moment, so still plenty of time, 2.45 left. So, yeah, uh, you don't necessarily have to throw. You just have to block on the front line and give your running backs an opportunity to make somebody miss and head down the field. You see the 6'1", 165-pound quarterback. Man, has he matured nice. The Chalmers Ballard entered today, 15 of 24, 187 yards in the air. They kick it to the outside, and it's Seegers again. He's pushing that bunch. Those legs just keep on moving. Tough physical run, as you mentioned, Jack. They'll now get into their two-minute offense. If you're Hanahan, you got to be careful because you don't want to get lulled to sleep thinking they're just going to run this clock out and then they hit you with a big play down the field. See, offensive coordinator Christian Hart, you know he's got something up in his sleeve. They jump it off, they fake everything left. They hit Bryce Rothwell with a nice little bubble screen on the right side as he stormed his way up for a, looks like, I thought it was a first down upstairs. It looks like they got him spotted just a yard short. And look at that matchup. Rothwell going against Hunter Gomes right there in the slot. Boy, that's tough on tough. Let's see if they can get Rothwell running a seam route right down the middle. If he could take advantage of his size. It's third and short, and that clock keeps on ticking. It looks like Christian Hardy wants a timeout to rethink what they're going to do. And you have to be careful here because if you throw it and it's an incom incomplete pass, that obviously stops the clock, and then you're punting from you know, inside your 20-yard line, and you could essentially be giving Hanahan the ball back on plus territory uh, here on the other side of the 50. It's a beautiful, tra beautiful transition. It's probably the best in the business. It's kind of why I was referring to Ballard's numbers. This is a guy that came into this contest with a 114 QBR rating. 
I'm a math junkie, so I love the numbers. 62% completion percentage. I think they really trust him with the ball in his hands on third and short. I think especially those numbers aren't inflated quite yet. They had to, had to throw the football quite right. this season after. Well, when you have big targets of that nature, yeah, especially Rothwell there in the middle, you know, you can get him to run a five-yard curl, get the first down, spike the ball, get, you know, in position, and then keep it going. So knowing Christian Hart, he's probably looking for a matchup uh, uh, where he has a matchup advantage. As you see also jogging back onto the field, you know, for the uh, Bengals, obviously our guys, uh, Charles Bird. So you see him in, in the slot. That definitely is a mismatch, Bird, with his speed. We've seen a lot of Bird in the slot tonight. It's Seeger's joining the backfield bottom of the screen that's Trevor Reynolds and at the top it's Mason Ombres he's been Ballard's favorite target tonight he's got Rothwell in motion they hand it off to Seegers he just keeps churning those feet for about a gain of four and the Bengals move those sticks still one still 145 like you said pick up a first down allow the Bengals to run their next play First Looks like Seeger's Jack is going off limping. It's Charles Bird now in the backfield. That's Seeger's first down. It's brought to you by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodeling brand. Nice pitch and catch the middle of the field to Hombres. That'll move the chains as well. Another West Shore Home first down. That's going to be a development. Maybe we're going to have Trooper Bob look into it. See the health of Seeger's. Obviously, he's limping off the field. Those are the two premier backs for both squads, potentially a little banged up tonight. We know Graham Thomas has a big leg, so just got to give him a chance to put one up in the air. Ballard's going to have to escape the pocket. He looks to kick it to the outside, but he's met by Jay Meadows. We haven't said his name quite yet tonight. That's his second sack of the season. Meadows, he leads the Hawk with 15 tackles. Now make it 16. Meadows, six foot one, 175 pound middle linebacker. He's one of the best in the low country. Yeah, that would have been a tough play, but that's one of the ones that you want to see Ballard just throw that ball out of bounds. You know, he's trying to make a play, thought he could outrun the defense, couldn't quite do it. A big stop there for Hanahan. But again, still teaching. Believe it or not, Jack, I mean, it's still just the third game of the season. So guys still kind of getting the feel, uh, feeling their way out. Of course, Lucy Beckham didn't play last week. They were supposed to play uh, Bishop England. That game canceled. So. Yeah, that's one of those teaching moments that I'm sure Christian Hart will be able to pop in the films in this situation. Just got to get rid of it, stop the clock, give us another chance. You bring up a great point, something we haven't mentioned quite yet. Last week, a matchup between Lucy Beckham and Bishop England canceled. Um, obviously, a lot of circumstances in that situation, so very understood why they didn't play the game. But maybe kind of similar to my cadence and tempo. I appreciate everyone home sticking with me. A little bit out of sorts in this first half of the Bengals. It was. You know, you kind of get in that rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. It was a bye week, but it's one thing if – it's a bye week, and you know it's coming. You thought what's going to happen, but an op opportunity for the kids to kind of get their bodies right, take a weekend off, and what a dime. Oh, my goodness. What a beautiful toss. He's got the outside linebacker looking to jump it, and he places it right into the bread basket of Charles Bird for a West Shore home first down. Bird in the backfield, Bird in the slot. Yeah. Boy, is he something special to watch. That looked like a nice wheel route, and he's able to deliver it right on point. We talk about the, the matchup disadvantages. Great job by Lucy Beckham. We talked about Caden and Tempo. This is the first time tonight, kind of out of sorts, it's the first time we've seen them go to that no-huddle offense. That's something that offensive coordinator Christian Hart, he loves to get this offense going. This is the second year that Chalmers Ballard's been in the system. He knows it well. They really seem to be on cue and a really, I think, smart hit timeout by head coach Milan Turner allowed his defense to reset. Well, and we saw them run it a little against Wanda, and that kind of threw Wanda off and kind of then started to slowly but surely wear them down. So, again, that change of pace, that change of tempo, so important. And uh, Lucy Beckham pulling it off here with 51 seconds left. 51 seconds left in the second quarter. If you're just joining us, Hanahan with a 14-13 to lead. Two field goals from Graham Thomas. He did have a miss just barely wide right. But a missed drop field or touchdown in the end zone uh, for Lucy Beckham. And this game kind of back and forth, a game of momentum, a game of swings. And now the Beckham Bengals looking to try to steal some ports, some points before they get away to the half. You can see Hanahan right now kind of in a prevent defense. Don't let anyone get behind you. Right down. Ballard. Hanahan's going to give him that little out route. He's going to take it. Perfect timing throw, everything in rhythm, run to the stick. 
turn outside, delivered the ball on time. That's one of the ones, Jack, that you don't wait until he turns. You throw it knowing that he's going to be in the right place at the right time. Great throw by uh, Chalmers. You know, Ombres, Ombres, that's his fourth catch of the night. They are really in rhythm. And still the Hawks kind of in that prevent defense. They got four deep. Bowden looking out to the left. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to look to scramble and run. Wow, what an athletic play. Great wrap-up tackle by Hunter Strader, but Ballard falls forward for about a nine-yard gain. Yeah, always fall forward, never back. 30 seconds clock run, and he spikes the football. Were you a little surprised? Second and two, you think they can get a playoff? Well, obviously, the coaching staff knows a whole lot more <laughs> than I do. So, And you'd have to think this is something that they practice. So, you know, down in distance, situation, how much time's on the clock, here's what we're going to do. And so, yeah, they're executing it to perfection. I was going to say, well, they waste the down to go to third and two, but especially with this field position, got to imagine it's four down toward territory. Yeah. And you're already at the 35, so I think if you pick up five more yards, you'll be in Graham Thomas uh, field goal range. So, yeah. Ballard, he's going to drop back. He's going to escape to the right. He finds Brosey for enough for a first down, about a four-yard gain. But looks, more importantly, he got out of bounds. Gets out of bounds, but how impressive. Looks to the left, checked down, checked up. Ballard going through his progressions is just a junior. I'm telling you, this is a really special quarterback. And we talked about it earlier in terms of quarterbacks having the tendency to stare down their receiver. Nice job of reading the field from left to right and then dumping it off, picking up a first down. There's still plenty of time, 22.3 seconds left. Again, that's the third West Shore home. First down of this drive. Clock stopped at about 22. Ballard in the backfield. He finds Charles Bird. It's about a five-yard gain. That clock is still running. Curious if they feel good field goal position because as they're trying to get back to the ball, Ballard, and looks like they're going to waste that final timeout with eight seconds. There wasn't a lot of urgency. I'm sure there was a little bit of miscommunication behind that sideline in Ballard. And I'm not so sure with no timeouts, unless you throw an out route, you want to take that risk. I mean, you look at it right now, Jack. They're already in field goal range. So, you know, if you do throw something, it definitely needs to be on the outside. You can't afford to take a sack. You can't really throw the football in the middle unless it's, you know, by uh, across the sticks. So let's see what happens here. Well, you know, it was interesting, too. We've seen all three field goal attempts on that right hash from Graham Thomas. They throw that little out to Charles Bird. They've got it spotted at the 26, which is a 43-yarder for the sophomore Graham Thomas. He's shown he's got the leg. Do you think they feel comfortable set up the kicking unit? Well, in that situation, though, if you're sanding out him, then you let the clock run down a little more since so the last play to half. So, granted, 8.3 seconds left. Not much can happen then as, we, yeah, they're sending the field goal team out. I would just think you'd want that last play to be. Yeah, especially with how hectic special teams have kind of been tonight. We saw the miscue of the punt from Hanahan, the missed field goal earlier in the game, but Thomas, he has proven that he's got definitely enough leg to reach. It is, it's gonna be a 43 yarder from Graham Thomas and a chance to reclaim the lead for the Bengals. And this is a weapon. I mean, to have a kicker that has this type of leg in high school, that definitely is an added advantage. Snaps high, but Ombres is able to get it down. It's up, and it, ooh, it's wide. I thought from upstairs it was good, but it looks like it was wide right from Graham Thomas. The second missed field goal to half there, two for four in the special teams unit. And the Hawks, Ben, don't break. But once again, more than enough leg, just could not get it aligned. Needed it to come hook back just a little bit to the left, so the Hawks uh, dodge a bullet here, and I'm, assuming that they'll just take a knee here and go to the locker room with the uh, one-point lead. Like Coach Turner's got to be ecstatic with how his young sophomore quarterback composed himself without Cave on Rivera in that starting lineup. It looks like they will with just three seconds left. Take a knee and head to halftime. E with the Hawks with a one-point lead heading to the half. What were you so impressed by? with that underclassman quarterback how he's able to command this Hawks offense. Honestly, yeah, on the fly. I'm sure he kind of had an idea that maybe uh, Kayvon Rivera would not be available tonight, but for him to take that leadership and take that, uh, I guess just being the man on his shoulder and leading this team, delivering two outstanding throws, I think it says a lot about him. And then for Lucy Beckham to be able to answer the bell, had a little bit of adversity, able to fight their way back in, a one-point game at the half. Well, tonight, before we head out for a halftime report, Trooper Bob's got us on a little bit of a halftime report with Coach Turner as they head to the 
head to the locker room. Yeah, guys, I'm down here on the coach. Bob, coach. what you got for us? Yeah, I'm down here on the sidelines with Coach Turner. Coach, one point leader in halftime. What's your message to your team going in? Well, it's 0-0. I mean, what a heck of a first half. If you love high school football, this has been a really good one to watch. They've got a great team, great staff. Uh, you know, they'll go in and make adjustments. I always say halftime speeches are overrated and adjustments are underrated. So we'll go in there and look at some things we need to improve on, maybe some tweaks in the second half. Um, but it's a 0-0 game. Got to dig deep. Got 24 minutes. Appreciate you, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. Guys, I'm down here. I also have a, uh, a Hannah Ann alum down here, Trooper Nick Pye, spokesperson for the Highway Pro. What's your message tonight for everybody watching tonight? Real easy. On your way home, make sure you buckle up, don't drive distracted, and go Hawks. There you go. You heard it from the man. I'll send it back to you guys upstairs. Trooper Bob, stay buckled up on your way home tonight. Well, we're going to take a break with him. We're staying buckled up in here upstairs because this was an unreal first half of football. His preferred home services by our rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet. Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report. Each week, the Thumb Up guys are proud to highlight a scholar athlete from each participating school. The student selected will have an opportunity to win a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. Tonight's scholar athletes are between Lucy Beckham and Hannah Hannah High School. We're going to start off with the Bengals. We saw her last week. It's Charlotte Little. How about that GPA? A 5075 weighted 396 unweighted GPA. That's wildly impressive. She's 19th in her senior class. Also, athletically, she was a first-team all-region goalkeeper for the unbelievable Lucy Beckham soccer team, as well as a first-team all-state member. Charlotte in the community is a member of the NHS club, key club, beta club, and also a member of the Bengal Buddies. Shout-out to you, Charlotte Little. For the Hanahan Hawks, it's Henley Nicodine. Henley, a cheerleader with the Hanahan Hawks, is a 4CA All-American member, a three-year varsity cheerleader team member, a captain on this season's 2023-2024 cheerleading season, and a three-year member of the soccer team as well here for the Hawks. Take a look at that GPA, a 479 for Henley as she takes care of it on the field, the pitch, and in the classroom as well. In the community, Henley is a president of the club, uh, Voy, student body president, member of NHS, and Hanahan Res Renaissance, excuse me, clearly not as smart as Henley, and a member of Hanahan's Young Life community as well. Two incredible student athletes that we get to celebrate this week, all thanks to the Thumb Up guys.
Welcome back. We're talking scholar athletes here with one of the thumbs up guys. That's Brandon Dawson from the law firm that is sponsoring our scholar athletes this year. We're so excited to work with them. And I'm assuming in your office there's plenty of sports talk this time of year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've got a UGA grad, a UNC grad, an NC State grad, and I'm a Clemson grad. So you can imagine there's a lot of football talk. Um, you know, for a while there, I was on top with the Tigers and most recently Jeff Ward. Uh, the UGA grad has been, uh, he's got bragging rights these last couple years. For you guys, what do you do primarily? What, what type of law? Why should people call you? We do all personal injury law. It's the only thing we do is we work, we help out people who are injured. So, you know, if you're hurt, we help. As far as this scholarship, why do you want to do it? What is it about this scholarship that kind of entices you guys to give back? Well, again, it's, it's one of those things where we're all, you know, high school athletes. We know what it takes to, you know, work hard in the classroom, you know, to make it through law school. And we also know how hard it is to show up, you know, for uh, two days for football at 5 a.m. Uh, so we know that these kids are working their tail off on both the field uh, and in the classroom. So, again, great opportunity to give back to the community. It's one of the pillars uh, of our law firm is giving back to the community, supporting the community. So, you know, just honored to be here today. Awesome. The Thumbs Up Guys presenting this year's Scholar Athlete. We'll be right back with more from the Doctors Implants Halftime Report. Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report. Hey fans, we're giving the opportunity of a lifetime to vote tonight on Delta Force's All-Stars Cheer of the Game. Go log on to abcnews4.com slash poll and vote for either of tonight's cheer squads. We've obviously got our Hannah Ann Hawks, the host team, the Lucy Beckham Bengals. Go cast a vote for the Delta Force All-Stars Cheer of the Game results later tonight in the show. Here, go ahead and take a look. You, you be the judge at home. Go vote. I'm telling you, it's an absolute blast. Log on to abcnews4.com slash poll to cast your vote for either squad tonight as we take our final break before we get ready for the second half. We'll be right back with more from the Doctors Implants Halftime Report.
Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yes, I, we do not have stats at all. No stats. So um, I can't get it to work either. Yeah. No, it's it's, it's us as well. So we're just kind of kind of winging it. We appreciate you guys hanging with us. Welcome to the Doctors Implants Halftime Report. Preferred Home Services Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet at the end of today's ball game. Tonight's trophies and the scholar athlete plaques at the end of the season are actually all provided by All American Awards. All American Awards helping Charleston recognize excellence since 1993. Jack Delonchel, ever Jeremy saw a lot of excellence in that first half. Yeah, from both teams, offensively, defensively, special teams, a little bit of everything we saw there in that first half. But, yeah, you're right, excellence, elite. That's all American awards. And if you're trying to keep up with a lot of high school football in the area, then look no further. After the game, make sure to switch over to News 4. Get complete highlights from all the action around the low country with News 4's sports director Scott Eisberg and Webb Wright. Friday Night Rivals on News 4 starts at 11.05. Tune over and go right to him. See all tonight's highlights around the area. The best of the business. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that story that Scotty did with uh, watching the Clemson game with Gabe, uh, Coach Gardena up there at, at Charleston Southern, that's what I love about Scotty, just always thinking outside the box. Catch him and Webb tonight. All the highlights. Everyone shooting on iPhones, rotary phones, <laughs> camera phones. They'll have it uh, tonight coming up at 11.05 on ABC News 4. Anyway, anyhow, they always get it done. Uh, and talk about getting it done, man. Our upcoming schedule with Friday Night Rivals is stacked and loaded. We talked about how excited we were tonight because we knew about kind of the implications of this one. Uh, but take a look. Next week, Kane Bay at James Island, uh, Gaffney, Fort Dorchester. That's two powerhouses. And then Buford, Phillip Simmons, a couple names that we've already seen this season, Everett. But uh, that next week one, Kane Bay, J.I., a lot of lofty expectations from both programs. Yeah, well, of course, we saw Kane Bay get that win in week one over Buford. Uh, James Island, a lot of people think they got a chance to make a lot of noise here in the low country and go uh, pretty far, even potentially a state championship. So looking forward to that next week. Then, of course, Gaffney and Fort Dorchester. Now, Jack, that week I will not be here with you. I'll actually be in, in Nebraska taking my daughter to her first Nebraska football game. So I don't know who will fill the, the chair that day, but it'll be a good, oppor a good opportunity to see a good football game. And then, of course, you know, get to see Coach Lee Brand again at Buford. And Eric Bendick talking about that whole uh, – tree of Jimmy Newton at Wando, ex-Wando player, coach with him, doing a great job there at Phillips Simmons. I believe they're still undefeated as well. we got some good games coming up uh, here over the next three weeks. And Nick Saban, a.k.a. Jimmy Newton, yeah. coaching tree. Talk about guys that are really kind of galvanizing programs in their first inaugural seasons. Eric Benden's done a phenomenal job with the Phillips Simmons Iron Horses. Really excited to get up there and see them, but uh, you can take a look, man. He's Stands have been absolutely packed to the teeth tonight. Maybe getting some concessions yeah. at the uh, at the merchandise stand, and they'll be ready to roll for the second half. Yeah, that section to the left. Yeah, no, uh, Hannah Hand parents, your kids are actually here. They're just at the concession stand or taking a potty break right now. But yeah, when the game starts, I promise you, to the left, that will be filled with construction workers. That means a Hannah Hand student section. The same man. As we see, we'll take our final break before you head back and get this second half underway. It's the Hannah and Hawks. They lead 14-0. 
14 to 13. We'll be back in just a few. We'll be right back with more from the Doctors Implants Halftime Report. Sounds good. I got Trooper Bob down here on the right. If he's ready, we're ready. I got him. Market in Georgetown, they didn't have any. It was at uh, Merle's Inlet that had it. But. Uh, Georgetown, downtown Georgetown, they're on the river branch. The first quarter was Ann Lewis. He's coming to the first quarter, Ann Lewis. And a fan of the first half, Pan Long, Cooper Nick, and Pan 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 of the first half. Yeah, it looks better, the light. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you again. Yes, sir. It's Preferred Home Services Friday Night Rivals, driven by Crew Chevrolet. The man, the myth, the legend, Trooper Bob, he stands by with head coach Jamil Smith. Yeah, I'm down here with Coach Smith. Coach, what was your message to your team at halftime? Well, I think in the first half, we were not laser focused. And I've been telling them all week, you got to focus in. You got to lock in. You got to be laser focused. And, uh, you know, it showed up in the first half. We made a couple of mistakes on offense that took us um, out of the red zone. And then on defense, they got a couple of first downs because we wasn't laser focused. But, you know, that was the message at halftime. We're going to lock in, okay? Everybody is going to play their position right there, and we're going to come together as a team and win this thing. You want to see more of a ground game, or you want to see some more passes in the second half? Well, it's just going to be physical. It's going to be physical with those starting with those guys up front, and then you know finish it off on the back end. But we got to finish tackles on defense, um, and we just got to finish off drives on offense. Coach, I appreciate your time. Best of luck in the no second problem. half. Thank you, so Thank you. Well, there you heard it from the coach. I'm going to tell you, the crowd, I don't think anybody has left the stadium here. Everyone's at the food uh, vendors there. The music's pumping. The band just got off the field. The student section's getting packed. It's still a great time out here at Hanahan High School. Trooper Bob, he's bringing the juice down on the sidelines for us. And I'm telling you right now, you talk about a guy fired up, Jamel Smith. He's going to have his guys ready to roll. Well, I don't think there's a visitor's locker room here at Hanahan, but it's probably a good thing that there isn't because if there <laughs> were, I feel like they'd be sending an invoice. Hanahan would be sending an invoice to Lucy Beckham because I'm sure Coach Smith ripped into his team because obviously you know when your team can play better, mental, uh, mental mistakes, those are the ones that are correctable. So he talked about it being laser-focused. You know, I'm sure they did not overlook this Hanahan team as it's a solid football team. But, again, sometimes it's just that one play that could be the difference in winning and losing. So let's see if his message resonated with his football team here in the second half. Well, I think it's important that we emphasize, too, like he brings so much passion. And you want to know why this program is as successful as it is? Is because this team takes on the embodiment, the representation of their head coach, who had a ton of 
success as a player, but as a defensive coordinator at Wando, some time at Coastal Carolina, he's got so much wisdom and he's so passionate and so involved in these young student athletes' lives. It's inspiring to see from afar. You're going to see this team, I believe, look like a totally new ball club in the second half. Oh, absolutely, and don't get it twisted. I'm sure Hanahan and Coach Turner did the same thing as well. Both teams are, are good at MTA, making the adjustment. So it's like a chess match. Who's going to make the adjustment to what the other team is going to do? So, yeah, I don't expect the second half to be any less spectacular than what we saw in the first half. Oh, no, I got to tell you, my favorite line, we had the opportunity to talk to Coach Turner as you see him right there. He told us, he told a pillar of this program, how he was able to kind of skip that rebuilding phase in just year one. The former Georgia Southern assistant coach, he told us, culture isn't something, you don't put it on a t-shirt, you don't put it on a wall, you got to touch it every day. Right? I think these kids in this area, this community, has completely adopted Coach Turner and his family, and it's very evident in the way that they play for him. Well, and you know, you think about it as well. Okay, so you don't have your leading rusher. They've been in this situation before, just a couple of weeks ago, where they were trailing by, I believe it was 14 points uh, with about eight minutes to go against Berkeley and ended up losing by one. So we always talk about those teachable moments. That was a teachable moment. Now, guys, remember we've been in this situation. Lucy Beckham is a good football team. We have to come out and play harder in the second half than we did in the first half. The score is 0-0, zero to zero, laser focus. Let's go out and finish strong over these last 24 minutes. And you bring, you bring up a great point. Talk about teachable moments. This is a ball club. He told us no excuses. They had three guys leave and had to go play at other programs in the low country. Doesn't matter. Next man yeah, up. Exactly. Against Georgetown in week one, two-thirds of his team was their first every varsity snap. Yeah. So this is a young group, and they are growing up week by week. This is an outstanding test. An early test, not going to see many teams on the level of Lucy Beckham. This is exactly what Coach wants as he gets his ready, his team ready for region play. We'll be primed and ready to roll for region play, but our crew, they're always primed and ready to roll. You see our TEC equipment rental scissor lift. They're so generous in providing that scissor lift for all of our games. You see our incredible crew. He's a trooper up there. He's yeah. zoomed in on us. We're zoomed on in him. Yeah, the best crew in the world. I say, he, he's not Trooper Bob, but he's a trooper because <laughs> better him than me, you know. Not necessarily afraid of heights, but, uh, yeah, you know, in those situations, Jack, I'd prefer to be up here. Speaking of heights, <laughs> you know, we were talking about next week, Jack, the game at James Island. I'm already <laughs> dreading having to climb those stairs at James Island. So we take a look there at the student section. I told you, parents, they're here. They're here. They, they didn't leave. They had to go get rehydrated uh, for the second half. But, yeah, that, that crawl, that, now Jack, see, now he's, he is looking at us. We're waving so we'll, we'll wave at him up there. there. So, but, yeah, it's uh, I, I guess I'm going to start, like, working out to get ready for next Friday. Hitting that Stairmaster. Well, you're dreading that walk. I think a lot of opposing ball clubs are dreading playing in front of that <laughs> student section because they are loud and in action tonight. That neon, it's tough to miss. The Hawks kind of played and rallied around that passion. Their student body is broad. Got a little sandstorm blaring. Of course, Gamecocks tomorrow. Sell out. Uh-oh. Maybe a week to forget if you're a Gamecock fan. Not so much if you're a Hawk fan, though. Yep, they're ready for second half action. Well, it's Eric Johnson on the kickoff. Perrin catching, looking for the return. We'll boot it away. Well, Mason Ombres will catch around the 15. A dash and dart up that right sideline. He just keeps moving that pile. Again, great field position for the Bengals as he looks like he's knocked out of bounds at around the 47. Now you and I talked about it, Jack, this situation of the better conditioned team is probably going to win this game. We talked about the fact that both of these teams have a lot of guys playing both ways, offensively, defensively, even some on special teams. This is obviously going to be a four-quarter game. Who is better conditioned to finish this one off? Now they got two tight ends and Charles Bird on the outside blocking for Seegers. Seegers cuts it back up field, lunge forward for about a four-yard gain. We saw him kind of yeah. limp off the field, so it's good to see Seegers back out on the good, gridiron. Good to see him back. I'm sure they probably got it tie, uh, taped pretty tightly. Never, not going to stop Seegers. You can tell he's just one of those guys you're going to have to pry him out of the lineup. God, it's always going to give you his all. I told you how important it is up front. Ballard, a little play action. 
just outside the outreached arm of Trevor Reynolds, lead to a third and six. And Reynolds had the inside position, so that's one you maybe want to follow through, get it down just a tad bit, and allow Reynolds to kind of catch that one as his momentum is going up the field. So right idea, but you got to bring it down just a little bit because that could have been a big yard after catch had he been able to complete the pass. Ballard gets the play call from O.C. Christian Hart. He'll snap with 11-19 on the clock, and Ballard, he's going to take a shot downfield. He's got his man in one-on-one. -on -one. It's Drew Goldsmith, but great coverage by the two-way man, Goldsmith, as he looked like he had hombres down the field. Better defense. And just a good job of being on the inside. If he was going to complete that, he would have had to jump over the back of Goldsmith. So Goldsmith, a nice job of not allowing the bigger uh, receiver to get the inside position. But a nice ball thrown, but just better coverage by Drew Goldsmith. Looks like he got there in perfect time. You know, I'm a little surprised with the play call taking a shot in third and medium to see the punt team out. We knew this is a really aggressive bunch. A little trickeration in the special teams bag. What you think? Well, I mean, his defense has been playing well. They gave up the two big plays that Coach talked about there at the half. But all in all, they've done a nice job of not allowing Hanahan to really come up with sustainable drives. So he's going to rely on his defense. They've been pretty solid all year long thus far. End over end kick from Gabe Thomas. A neck kick for about 28 yards as it was going to be fair caught by... Landon Gomes has been all over the gridiron tonight. And that's where sophomore quarterback in the Hawks offense, Julius Hippensteel, will take over. And look who's on the field right now, Kayvon Rivera. I don't know if he was on special teams or if he was running on the field for offense, but, yeah, Rivera has his helmet on. He's going, on, he's going in the game. What a weapon. Strategic, obviously, been battling a little bit of a knee contusion. It sounds like after a shot he took in that Berkeley fourth quarter, he was Everett's player to watch in this yeah. pre in this open. And I'm telling you right now, allow him to kind of sit and breathe in that first half. Now to be able to break. Look at that back. Come on, that's a big man at tailback to kind of tear him down in the second half with weapon and kind of energy booster for the Hawks. Again, in that first game for Hanahan. 30 carries, 326 yards rushing, Dead ball. and six Ball's touchdowns. Ball start. Offense number 78, five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Trey Summers just a little too anxious that time, ready to open up a hole for Rivera. So then you go back to the Berkeley game. You mentioned he made it through halfway through the third. He had 92 yards when he got hurt, so he was well on his way to another big day in terms of running the football. And it appears right now he's ready to gut it out. You see another yellow hanky on that far sidelines. I'm curious if they jumped again as they hand it. It's the first we've seen of Rivera tonight as he dives for about two yards, but it looks like he might be coming back. You know, and talking with some of the coaches before the game, they said Rivera was pretty rough on Monday, but then he had a good day of practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. So at that time in the pregame, they thought it was 75% that he would play. Offense. Hard penalty, first down. Well, this is not the start that the Hawks wanted. We talked about all the energy on that sideline to be able to throw your big back in the backfield. But now they're looking at first and 20 before they can even get going. And it goes back to those mental mistakes. Now's the time that you really have to lock in. It's a close game. Every, every yard counts. Have to have your offensive guys just settle down, relax, and play hand-to-hand -hand football. They got eight in the box. On first and 20, it's going to be Perrin catching on the outside. Nice tackle for Drew Goldsmith. Can scurry away. It's about an eight-yard gain to make it about six, second and 12. Nice tackle by catching. And that's what I like about this hand-to-hand -hand offense. Just so balanced, very comfortable throwing the football, obviously running the football. The offensive line, once again, doing a phenomenal job of giving Hip and Steel some time to deliver the football to his outstanding wideout, Drew Goldsmith. You watch. Coach Turner, hey, come on, the best ambassador this Hawk program. What do you guys represent? Talked about that offensive front at length. Tumbury, Roberts, Summers, Mitchell, and Bagwell. They've given quite the pocket for Hip and Steel as Hip and Steel tries to escape. Looks like it's going to be about a yard loss for about a third and 14. But he spoke endlessly about how important those front five were. 
Yeah, big tackle that time by Marshall Evans. Before we talk about that line, the junior defensive lineman coming up with the play. But, yeah, you're right. We asked him who's the one guy, if you had to pick up a yard to run behind, he said, honestly, any of them. He felt comfortable with all five, plus the, that, that second group of uh, linemen as well. So, yeah, he said it all starts and all begins with – those offensive linemen in hip and steel can't throw the football. Rivera can't run the football if those guys don't block up front. Hip and steel had a clean pocket, but better coverage in the secondary. Go ahead and credit that quarterback, Curry, to great work in the back end. It was number six, Robert Myers, number eight, Jackson Allison, and Perrin catching the guy we've talked about all evening. That almost a coverage sack. And that's one of those situations if you're Hanahan, you really were doomed from the start. You know, you had the two penalties before the uh, drive even started so it's hard enough to get 10 yards against this Bengal defense but to come up with 20 so a nice job by Lucy Beckham now the Hawks will have to punt it away we saw a miscue in the first half at this part of the end zone on the other side of the field it's Eric Johnson looking to punt away catching a weights at around the 40 this one end over it's got an advantageous Bengal bounce as it'll Scurry out of bounds in great field position for the Bengals at around the 43. But in the meantime, we kick it down to our main man, Trooper Bob. What you got for us, Trooper Bob? It's 920. Do you know where your children are? If you're in Hanahan, they're all here. They're either in the student section, they're playing, or they're cheerle cheerleading. I'm here with Tracy. She's a teacher here at the school. Yes, I'm an art teacher and a cheer coach. A lot of hard work goes into this. I've been watching them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They work four or five days a week. We're a sideline and a competition team. We work just as hard as any other athletes at our school, and we love it. And you have a scholar athlete down we there. We have a scholar athlete. Yeah, Henley Nicodine. She's a senior. She's a captain. We have some really smart amazing girls what's your favorite cheer because we want to hear your cheers touchdown we want six all right touchdown we want six let's watch them how they do it Well, how do you not shout out Delta Force All-Stars? All right, guys, sending it back to you See guys in hand. the booth. Thank you. Well, you got to shout out Delta Force All-Stars cheer of the game again. Trooper Bob giving us a little sneak peek on the sidelines as Ballard gets to the outside. Great ball placement and even better catch from Charles Bird for about an eight-yard game. Yeah, that's a hard throw. Throwing on the run, didn't get a chance to really get his feet set, but able to deliver a strike to Charles Bird. A big play on first down, so anytime you can have second down and three or four, uh, that playbook is now wide open. Hawk cheerleading squad trying to spur their team to a huge win. Are we going to pretend that Trooper Bob might not have a cheerleading future? <laughs> <laughs> Steven Seegers has clearly got a future on the gridiron. He dashes for about a six-yard gain. That's good enough for a first down. That first down brought to you by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. Yeah, Hunter Strader there trying to punch the ball out there at the end. Couldn't quite do it. It's going to be a hard task being able to get the ball out of the Seegers' hands for sure. <laughs> We've got an official timeout on the field. It looks like the sticks. Those first down chains got a little bit tied up. This Bengal offense looking to get back to that up-tempo cadence that we saw in that first half. Yeah. Yeah, getting back to Trooper Bob, though. I mean, he could be a Mike man, you know, <laughs> lead, leading the charge. Look at the cutback. Steven Seegers makes a man miss. It's going to result in about a 22-yard gain. Steven Seegers, now you see me? No, you don't. Just the, the field vision and the ability to get around. Didn't even use the, the, the stiff arm that time and showing his explosive speed down the sideline. Boy, do I like Stephen Seegers. That guy can flat out run the football. And we haven't even seen Robert Myers in the backfield tonight. It's been all Charles Bird and all Stephen Seegers. Myers has been really crucial in the secondary. As How about that tackle? Look at the big fella, Antoine Mitchell. That's his third tackle for a loss on the season. Yeah, you know who needs a helmet when you're Antoine Mitchell? That's a tough task, getting Charles Bird down on the ground. So, again, being very disruptive, getting in the backfield and not allowing that explosive run game of Lucy Beckham to get uh, going. It's about a loss of four for Bird. 
back. The Bengals are behind the chains as Ballard and the Bengals facing about a second 14. He's got Rothwell right back up the middle of the seam. Chalmers Ballard, he keeps it, and what a great read. Bryce Rothwell, he writes the wrongs of the drop in the first half, and in the second half, he delivers a tried and technical touchdown. I told you they were going to go back to him. Sometimes the toughest pa uh, pass to catch is when you're that wide open. Give it to the big guy on the seam out. Just ran straight down, pretended like he was going to block, release, and look at the big guy. Rumble and stumble and get into the end zone. Lost the ball, but it didn't matter because Brothwell is in the end zone. The Bengals back on top. Oh, and look at this. They go for two, and they catch the Hawks sleeping. It was that little muddle huddle where they waited to transition the line of scrimmage back to the line. Mason Umbre sees it. He takes advantage, and the two-point conversion gives the Bengals the seven-point lead. We talked about it. That's something you want to have on tape so that way teams have to prepare for it. They fell asleep just like that. A touchdown lead for the Bengals. Game of momentum, and it swung back to that away sideline. We're going to take a break with them on the field. The Bengals, they regain the lead. They lead 21-14 to 14. this night. Brought to you by Preferred Home Services and driven by Cruise Chevrolet. This week, South Carolina Veteran of the Week is Tim Conrad. Some of Ar Army Sergeant Major Timothy M. Conrad's awards and decorations include the Bronze Star Medal, the Meritorious Service Medal, Army Commendation Medal, Army Achievement Medal, the Army Superior United Award, Army Good Conduct Award, the National uh, Deaf Service Medal with Bronze Star, the Kosovo Campaign Medal with Bronze Service Star, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, and many, many more. Feels hard to believe, I mean sergeant tim conrad so wildly accoladed if you want to learn more about dion jarrett and visit sdva.se.gov slash veteran of the week you can also nominate someone to be recognized just like sergeant tim conrad the south carolina veteran of the week is sponsored by the south carolina department of veteran affairs thank you to tim conrad and all that serve our country that allow us to have our freedom to do things like friday night rivals and see two outstanding football teams uh-oh. We've been showing the fan cam on the student section. I think some parents came to party. <laughs> the, the, the bingo bunch. <laughs> the bingo bunch. I believe they call it the cage or the jungle. Ah, gotcha. South Pleasant. That Graham Thomas boot fired away. And look at the special teams unit. That third phase swarming. Landon Gomes on that kickoff return. That's where the Hawks will take over. All about momentum swing right now. All the momentum on Lucy Beckham's side. We were talking before we went to break, Jack. That was a Jimmy Noonan special on the special team, the two-point conversion. And that's why we talk about it. Attention to detail. you got to pay attention. Sometimes that one little slip-up could be the difference between getting the W if you're Lucy Beckham and winning your third game or if you're Hanahan losing and losing back-to-back -back heartbreakers. You know, we talked to head coach Jamel Smith. How incredible it was for him to bring back Jimmy Noonan, who he was his defensive coordinator when Jimmy Noonan was the head coach at Wando, to kind of full circle. Christian Hart, who's arguably the most successful quarterback in the history of the Wando's program. It's a family affair for the Bengals, and it's a family affair in that backfield as that defensive front is starting to have its way. Yeah, we call that roll call at the football and leading the Charles Drake Bull along with Jaden Moore. So, yeah, that's one of those in your huddle. Hey, I'll see you in the backfield. I'll get to the quarterback. I'll see you there. Get Get there and be angry when you get there. I was going to say, Drake Bull, he's a really high-motor player that definitely deserves to play at the next level. That's his fourth tackle of the night. He had nine coming into this one. 
how about six of them all in the backfield? Six mm. tackles for a loss. This kid's get off the line of scrimmage. Really impressive. But still, no time for hand to hand to panic. Just take your time. It's just a one possession game. Don't get out of character and try to do things you don't normally do. Well, I'd start to panic if I was that left side because Drake Bull, there's his second sack of the season. A big time sack in the backfield. His hip and steel will go down, and now the Hawks are looking at about third and 12. Yeah, and Marshall Evans as well. Right now, the defensive front four, those guys are looking to eat. They want to get at the football, they want to force a turnover. Big play coming up here. Now they really, Hanahan needs that offensive line to step up and allow uh, the quarterback, Hip and Steel, some time to throw. He'll roll out to the left. He's looking for his man, and he couldn't find him. It was Gabe Dodderwich just outside, out of bounds. And in coverage was number six, Robert Myers. We talked about Ryer Myers. He's a really talented running back, but he's been just as good at that free safety spot. After a couple mishaps in the first half, the secondary is starting to step it up. And if you're a Coach Smith, this is the recipe for success. You go down, you score. Then more importantly, you force a three and out. You get the ball right back, give it back to your offense, Got that offense feeling good about itself, throwing the football, running the football. Hanahan, also, you have to be careful here. You're in your end zone. Got to get this punt off. The Bengals look like a bulls on parade. It looks like they're going to attack the punter, Eric Johnson. Can he get it away in time? He will. That rugby style end over. will land it around the 35, and it'll trickle out to about. Looks like it'll stop at that Beckham 46. That's where Chalmers Ballard. He'll look to keep that momentum swayed in the boys in white. You know, we talk about field position always being so important, Jack. It seems like every possession, for the most part, uh, for Lucy Beckham is always starting in positive territory. So that, as we see, there's a flag on the play. Let's see if they'll have to re-kick or if they'll be able to tack it on. It was tossed around midfield. We're still awaiting an announcement, and it looks like we're about to receive one. De Dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct on the kicking team number 77. That is his first on sportsmanlike conduct towards disqualification. Dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct, kicking team number 23. This is also his first on sportsmanlike towards disqualification. The foul's offset at the end of the kick, first down. As you heard, beautifully said by head umpire Shane Roberts there. Uh, Emotion, not emotional, as you see some offsetting penalties, a little extracurriculars after the play. And I love when the officials kind of punish both teams because, you know, usually there's an instigator and there's somebody who retaliates, but both are, are guilty. So good job tonight by this officiating crew led by uh, referee uh, Kyle Bolshkov. Ski, uh, and like you said, Shane Roberts as well, Luke Sayers, Joel Crosby, and Joseph uh, Yochim. So, guys, they've really, in such a heated, spirited game, they've done a nice job not letting it get out of control. And you said it beautifully, I, too. It got pretty chippy early. Yeah. They've done a great job of kind of making sure that tempers are arised, but also are kind of cool heads are kind of commanding over. And uh, it looks like they're kind of making sure. I do believe that if one more on Sportsman, like on either of the players mentioned, they will be disqualified for the game. So obviously the players mentioned uh, will look to play a little bit under more control as Ballard goes to play action. He'll scramble out to the right. It looks like he's got about six, seven yards to pick up. The pocket passer, he's showing the wheels. A former stalker standout. Ballard's got about eight yards to make it about second and two. And a smart play by Ballard. Nothing there. Didn't force the ball. Didn't try to throw it across his body. Just uh, able to get whatever he could. Got out of bounds. Positive play. Six yards gain. Now it's second down and four. Second and four. Offensive coordinator Christian Hart can get creative. They take another shot. It's Charles Bird in the slot. They go back to Seeger. Seeger's met the backfield. Doesn't matter. Oh he lays the boom on the outside. He broke a tackle. He didn't want to go out of bounds. He wanted the contact. That's called finishing a run. Yes, you you initiate the contact. You are the hitter instead of the hit T. And that's why I love the tough physical running of Seeger's. A guy that has never seen a defender that he felt that like he could not run over. Big run. Not enough for the first down, so third and short coming up for. I was going to say, that was the far side of the field, so I guess he stepped out of bounds before he laid the boom. A great job at the Jay Hartwell to contain the outside. And they'll go back to Seegers, and he's got plenty on this carry to pick up the first oh. down here in the third quarter, which is brought to you by. Who we got today? Mr. Sparky. Look first at time and on. 
the first electron on time. Look at the sweet feet that time by Seegers with the jump stop and able to go right, left, make the defender miss. That was an outstanding run by Seegers right now. He is putting on a show from the running back position. To his ability to run somebody over, but also so shifty. This time they go back through the air, out side of the outreached arms. I believe it was Ombres again. But Everett, too, you talked about Seegers in the open, his ability to run somebody over, but the sweet feet, man. Yeah, and that was a lot, and a lot of traffic, so it was necessary to come to the jump stop, move to the left, come to another jump stop, and go back to the right. So, yeah, I, again, I've been very impressed with all of the running backs, whether it be uh, Seegers, whether it also be Bird, uh, just their ability to make guys miss. Look at Charles Bird in that jet sweep again. It looked like it was going to go for a loss, but he hits his own little jump stop. Cuts it back through the middle of the field for about a three-yard gain. Making something out of nothing. These running backs do such an outstanding job of that. Looks like plays are not going to develop or are going to result in losses, and somehow these guys find a way to kind of get skinny, kind of turn sideways, get through, and pick up two or three yards when they can. It's third and short. He's got Charles Bird out in the flats. Charles Bird takes the hit. And lunges forward for a first down. A great ball from Ballard. Maybe even a better route from Charles Bird. Again, another timing throw. You don't wait until the guy comes out of his break. You throw it knowing where he's supposed to be. That's when you have confidence. That's when you know you've done your, your throwing together over the summer. You have enough confidence in your teammates to be in the right place at the right time. Big time throw. Big time first down. Bengals trying to add to their lead. A low snap, but it won't matter. They get it back to Seegers. On first and ten, looks like he's got enough for about a four-yard gain. Two, talk about Charles Burton, how important he is to the fabric of this offense. He's seen him in the backfield, but his ability to run routes in the slots makes him a really interesting prospect at the next level. Well, and we saw what he did early with the jet sweep. There's so many different ways that you can motion him from right to left, left to right. You can move him into the backfield. You can make him a receiver. Running backs that can catch the ball in the backfield are definitely – in high demand. On the command, they go back to Bird, and he's going to trot into the end zone. But it looks like on that far side of the field, Mason Ombre's laid a great block on the outside, and instead, I think our official looks like it's going to be a hold on the outside. This one might be coming back. And you're Offense right, Jack. The three. holding Ten is the call. The spot of foul. Repeat second down. Yeah, he must have got those hands on the outside of those shoulder pads, and as a result, the holding penalty will negate the touchdown. You know, too, I, I thought it was a great hold. It looks like maybe at the end of the play, he just kind of tried to finish him off, and it didn't really look like he had to in that situation because Bird looked like he had the corner already beat. Yeah, one of those unnecessary penalties. But now Bird once again in that slot. Well, it's another low snap, and this time it's going to be Seeger to the corner. No hold necessary. He'll do it as on his own. Well, they reached the red zone, brought to you by TEC Equipment Rental. In the future, it's looking bright. A tried it technical college touchdown for Steven Seeger. Yeah, that's bright white uniforms in the end zone as Seeger's able to cruise and really untouched. We talked about the physical Lucy Beckham offensive line, and I think it looks like they're starting to wear down the smaller Hawks. Big run that time by Seeger's. I was going to say, you know, they saw – Started to run through the middle of the field behind those big guards as Graham Thomas fires it away, and the Bengals take a two-touchdown lead. That time they go out to the left side. The left tackle, Sawyer Hearn, did a great job containing the edge, but it was Bryce Rothfeld. The receiving touchdown and the pancake on the outside to give the Beckham Bengals a two-touchdown lead with just 3.48 to go in the third quarter. Brought to you by Preferred Home Services and driven by Cruz Chevrolet. She was a dear friend of mine and one of the finest educators ever from the state of South Carolina, Miss Lucy Beckham. We miss her dearly. I was too 
much from the field. Uh, I'm going to sit down for a second. Uh, he's not going to let me sit down Preferred home services. Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz, Chevrolet, and the Hawks. They got off to an early start, but a 15-0 run here in the third quarter. And it's got the Bengals feeling pretty good about themselves in this week four matchup. But he, maybe something kind of more important kind of going on here up at Hanahan. <laughs> Thank Jack. I'm pulling to you. I guess I need to cut my <laughs> mic on there. Um, but, yeah, just right during that timeout, uh, Rick Raycroft, who was the former principal at Hanahan, is now doing the PA and pretty cool moment he basically welcomed the lucy beckham uh fans here and said hey you know what i just want to say for those of you who never got a chance hanahan folks that didn't get a chance to meet the lady who is responsible for lucy beckham she's a dear friend of mine love her to death great lady and uh, i know she's you know obviously proud and smiling down right now so pretty cool and that's what high school athletics and sports is all about you know yeah you want to compete on the field but it's bigger than just the game and I thought that was very classy, no surprise, very classy of, of Rick Raycroft, the former principal here at Hanahan. I think, too, a, a touching moment for us both. And if you're listening to this broadcast, I would be willing to bet that Principal Beckham impacted your life like she did with us as well. And, and for her, them to kind of take a moment to honor and, and to show respect to maybe a lot of kids that didn't get to know Principal Beckham, a really cool moment. Yeah, exactly. Now, of course, I'm a little older than you, Jack. So I, I knew Lucy basically from broadcasting games when she was the principal you know, there at Wando, but just really put Wando on the map. Loved sports, loved her Warriors, um, you know, always supportive. You would, she would be at just about every athletic uh, event. And uh, so, yeah, so for her to, to have a school name after her, uh, just just pretty cool. And obviously the community of, of Mount Pleasant uh, affected with Wando still being there. And now, of course, uh, Lucy, Lucy Beckham as well. It's Graham Thomas fires away. This is the second kick. After the first was fired out of bounds, the Hawks, they opted to climb up for another kick and miss a big tackle in the backfield. That was number 24, Jack LaMonica, a great hit on special teams to corral Landon Gomes, who we know has been really tough. And we're going to see potentially another unsportsmanlike as he gets a little chippy. Yeah, and that's the situation you play within yourself. You can't allow your emotions to kind of get into it. Yeah, you know, things have not gone your way thus far here in the third quarter, but you were down... 13 points in the fourth quarter against Berkeley and cut it to a one-point lead. So you can't lose your composure. You still have to focus in. And as a result of his actions. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. This is also number two's first on sportsmanlike conduct towards disqualification. And these guys have to be careful because one more and they're out. And Landon Gomes so important to this offense. We've obviously seen the big shot that he had in the first half at 62-yard receiving touchdown. The Gomes twins, brother, kind of like the Bash Bros out there. Man. You, I feel like you need two guys like that on your ball club. They play with a little bit of an edge. They've been a lot of fun to watch tonight. But what you don't want to do is hurt your team. You know, you have to have that discipline, but you're right. You need a, a couple of those guys that, you know, as they say, you want to uh, blow or I should say block or tackle up until the, the the whistle completely goes off. As I believe there's another penalty on the play. I was going to say, we, we saw those two really crucial penalties on Hanahan's first drive that backed them up to second 25, and they just couldn't get back on time with the chains. And right now, we're kind of seeing that too deep, that defensive line, the personnel chain for the Bengals really playing its impact. Yeah, they're licking their chops. I mean, obviously, when you're up by 14, you don't necessarily, <clears throat> although there's still a lot of time left to, in this game, they can kind of pin their ears back and go after the quarterback because you have to think eventually Hanahan's going to have to start putting the ball up in the air. That time was Drake Bull again on that left side of the offense line. They go back to Kayvon Rivera. It's about a three-yard gain in Rivera. Again, it looks like the Bengals are putting about seven or eight in the box right now to slow Rivera down. Yeah, and just think, hey, if you're going to beat us, make it be through the air. So after those couple of mishaps early in the first half, this secondary of Lucy Beckman, Beckham has really done a nice job of making the adjustment, focusing in, as Coach Smith said, at the half, and really come out and played uh, Beckham football here in the third quarter. And this squad looks laser-focused as Hippensteel's looking at about a third and six. Joining the backfield by Rivera, Goldsmith in the slot. Snap with about 2.15 on the clock, and they're looking for Goldsmith. It's Goldsmith on a nice little slant for about eight yards in the first down. Nice run by Goldsmith, able to put that foot planted in the ground and make that turn on the slant. 
smart enough to know to run past the sticks. That's always been my pet peeve. Like, if it's third and ten, why are you running a five-yard route, you know? So that time, good route by Goldsmith. And more importantly, that will allow that defense a little more time to breathe and catch your breath over there, but extend this drive for Hanahan. And still, again, a whole quarter left, but you want to get some points here on this drive. And unfortunately, I don't really think field goals are going to do it. They really could use a big play here. So he goes back to Goldsmith, a little screen on the outside. Cuts it in, but look at the backside pursuit. That was Drake Bull, the defensive end on the entirely other side of the field. A great play by Bull. Sideline to sideline. That's what they're doing right now defensively running. When you got defensive linemen making tackles against wide receivers, your guys are in hot pursuit. So good job by that 11 uh, on the defensive side of the football for the Bengals. Bull's lining up against the left tackle, legitimately sideline to sideline to take down one of the faster players on the field and Drew Goldsmith. That was fifth catch of the game, and if my math stands corrected, and it might not, but looking at about 54 yards for Drew Goldsmith this afternoon. He's been the highest targeted receiver, and rightfully so. He's been spectacular tonight. Hip and steal from shotgun. He's going to stand up, go to the pocket. He's looking for him downfield, and Perrin Ketchin almost comes down with his fourth interception. The ball hawk, the two-way star, Catching all over the field. Well, in that situation, where you, that's why you play the ball. Great defense that time. Ball was definitely overthrown. He wasn't worried about uh, Goldsmith. He was worried about the football. Keeping his eyes on the prize. Almost came up with his fourth INT of the season. You're right. Man, that guy just has a feel for where the football is, and he always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Well, he's a shortstop on the diamond. He sure as heck on the gridiron looks like a center fielder. A stud athlete bound to play at the next level. They've got him matched up one-on-one -on -one with Drew Goldsmith. Third and ten. Got to imagine they go back to the Speedy Junior. But not before Coach Mel Smith will use his first time out of the half. And you have to think this play here. You get a stop here. You get the ball back. And if somehow the Bengals able to go down and score and make this a three-possession game, that's when it gets a little dicey uh, for Hanahan. But right now, it's safe to say this Lucy Beckham football team is just really punishing this hand-to-hand -hand team, and it's all starting in the trenches. When you talk about our crew Chevrolet keys to the game, when the lights are shining brightest, can you be your best? My question to you, E, how, what was the adjustment at halftime? We, we saw how passionate Coach Jamel Smith was coming out of the half, but they've stepped up. They haven't played in really a close ball game yet, but this is a veteran group. They've been able to do so here in the third quarter. You know, Jack, I'm not so sure if it was adjustments or just executing. You know, I think they had the right calls, but – I believe on one of the touchdown passes, I think one of the cornerbacks uh, may have been playing man. I thought he had safety help in the middle. But if one's playing man and one's playing zone, that's not a good recipe. So I think it was just more of, hey, guys, do what we do. Trust yourself. Do your part. Trust your teammates. And then come out and execute. And that's what they've done here in the third quarter. And that's why they've been able to uh, get this commanding lead. You need to credit the young sophomore quarterback. I think mean, Coach Turner is going to be really delighted when they go back and look at the film at Julius Hip and Steel in that first half. And two, how he's been able to handle a really talented veteran defensive bunch. Because you're right, he made a couple mistakes. And this defensive group, they're not going to make another in the second half. They're out to prove it. Third and 10 with 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Hip and Steel is absolutely speared. It's Hank Appley, another two-way guy, a catcher on the diamond, and an absolute bruiser on the gridiron. That's a huge sack to force the fourth down. Did you see that spin move? I don't even think the left tackle saw the spin move. What a move that time. He blew by him so quickly. That, wow. I got goosebumps. <laughs> Dwight Freeney that's coming off the line of scrimmage. He plays outside backer. They got him lined up in the bottom of the 3-4. And Hank Appley with one of the prettiest sacks, just textbook to force the fourth. Unbelievable play by the junior linebacker. The spin move to the inside. Yeah, that offensive line had no chance on that particular play. Well, there's a little bit of a... Scrum at the bottom of the field. I think the Hanahan coaching staff is convinced that it actually touched a bangle. Yeah, it looked like it was coming off the back of Robert Myers. Looks like it came off the back of Myers, but down on the field is number 10. That's Hunter Gomes. We don't want to speculate on injury, but the training staff is with him taking a look. 
Sending nothing but good vibes. Like we said, we don't want to speculate on injury as hopefully he's able to get to his feet. But that punt is going to signify the end of the third quarter. A 15-0 run by the Lucy Beckham Bengals has catapulted them back. It's preferred home service is Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Preferred home services, Friday Night Rivals, Crew, Chevrolet, Jack DeLongshaw, sitting alongside Everett German, sitting alongside what's been one of the better student sections we've had this yeah. year. The construction workers work at night, and right now, speaking of working, Lucy Beckham's got a little, I mean, Hanahan's got a little work to do if they want to win this game. Oh, man, talk about going to work. Charles Bird, see him in the slot, see him in the jet sweep, see him in the backfield. He claws for about six yards after taking a couple huge hits. Bird, a big back, super gritty. You really have to tip your cat to, you know, burn. Coming off that ACL injury, a lot of people sometimes mentally not necessarily there, but he's showing no signs of the fact that uh, he had a, a season-ending injury last year. Well, he's a leader on this team, vocal and by action. He's picking about like, 10 yards per carry as Ballard drops back. He's looking up the middle of the field, and it's going to be picked off. Number 42, Josh Amara. That's his second pick of the year and so needed for the Hawks. He jumps that route in the middle field and they have just jumped Hanahan -hand back. In what a job. Boy, did Hanahan need that. It appeared as Lucy Beckham trying to hit that seam route again down the middle. And again, tough throw right around three. Hanahan, you don't necessarily want to force that. But a big play from the Hawk defense and now the Hawks will take over on the offensive side of the football. He said, I wear my sunglasses at night so I can, so I can watch Josh Amara <laughs> with his second pick of the year. You can kind of feel that momentum swaying back to those blue jerseys. But a great adjustment. That seems been open wide wide open all night. And Amara jumps it. I mean, and come on, we got a last name like that. I mean you know you know the guy. I mean you know, you know the guy's solid. So but yeah, you're right. Good job of kind of getting under. The, the ball was underthrown being in the right place at the right time. And how about the, the big guy showing some hands on defense and coming up with the interception? Great defensive play on the outside. That was snuffed out by number 43, Daniel Fletcher. Fletcher came in this game with 12 tackles. Um, but, but you're right. I do think we have to make a special shout-out. Amara, the best athlete on the gridiron and on the softball field as well. Uh, definitely in our household, for sure. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. You see there, Daniel Fletcher. Fletcher's a senior. Got a tackle for a loss, but instrumental. He kind of plays that line and sound backer. Really a versatile player for Jamel Smith's defense. Hippie Steele drops back. He finds Goldsmith again. This time on the outside, he's met immediately by Perrin catching 
like peanut butter on jelly, and he's not letting Goldsmith out of his sight. Well, it's a good thing, a good job by catching. Basically, you play behind. Don't let him get behind you. Then the most important thing is once uh, Goldsmith makes the catch, you have to come up and make the tackle, or at least hold him up until the rest of your teammates come. So great defensive coverage that time by Lucy Beckham, and it forces once again another crucial third down for Hanahan. No Kayvon Rivera in the backfield. It's an empty backfield for Julius Hippensteel. He'll snap with about 10.40 in the clock. He drops back. He's got Goldsmith. The route that he just put on on that little out yes. route was absolutely clinical. He drove that defender down the field as if he was about to run a fly, obviously that being a catch. And then he just stopped, came back to the ball, made sure he ran past the sticks, picked up the first down, solid run. It's easy to see why Goldsmith is starting to get some looks from colleges. When we talked to Coach Turner about Goldsmith. He just said that he absolutely loves Friday nights. He loves Friday nights like West Shore Home loves first downs. That first down brought to you by West Shore Home. I'm telling you right now, Goldsmith, He's been absolutely unbelievable. But how about hip and steal? He kicks it to the outside. It was a broken play, and this is going to go for about 26 yards. The scramble, he escapes the product of the pocket and the vision downfield. That's good enough for another West Show home first Some, down. Sometimes the best play is the one that is not drawn up. Just make something happen. Hip and steal showing his athleticism there. Didn't want to force it. Good blocking down the field by his teammates. Another Hannah hand first. Now you got to think the Hawks are thinking, hey, we've been here before. Act like it. Now let's go and do the same thing we did two weeks ago. If you were, keep in mind, Berkeley two weeks ago, they lose by a point. The 5A stags, they go for two to yeah. try to win the game late. I love it. I love the gamble. This team not going to back down. It's hip and steel. They go to a little jet sweep of their own. That's Landon Gomes on the outside. But boy, is he met by Tyler Kinlock, who got to the football with a bad attitude. Yeah, that one didn't have a chance from the start. Once again, it's that great penetration by the defensive front of Lucy Beckham, reestablishing that line in the back. Yeah, it definitely was a hole. That was an easy call as the hole was right there in the middle, and that's a, a play that's going to back them up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Hey, you know what's so interesting, too? When we talked to Coach Jamel Smith, very similar to his playing crew. His linebackers and his safety, his secondary, they're all hybrid guys. They can play a lot of different positions, maybe none so more notable than Tyler Killock, who really flies around the field. Well, you know, it's one of those situations from a defensive standpoint. You love that because you don't have to have a dime package or a nickel package. Guys can either walk down, stop the run, or they need to drop back Holding into pass coverage. They can. Offense number 60. This penalty is declined. Second down. E, you perfectly noted it was a hold on the outside, but because the play went for about a seven-yard loss, Coach Smith will opt in the climb. Hawks now facing about a second and 17. Well, we'll see a situation here. You don't want, if you can, you know, you want to try to get at least eight to ten yards here to give yourself a chance uh, on third down. Seal getting ready to take a big hit. He shoots it through the middle of the field. It was number eight, Jackson Allison, in coverage. He was looking for number one, Gabe Dodowich, and it looks like they're going to say Allison got there a little early. Yeah. Could be potentially a DPI. We'll wait to find out. You talk about a big play here. You, instead of third down and 16, you have first down and 10 because of the pass interference, and that's the call. Defense number eight, the penalty is 15 yards. Replay second down. And I know in the box score it will go down as a penalty, and I'm, I'm a little bit surprised by the call on the field, but I'm not sure if they changed the – Second down marker. I said second and one, right? Because it was second Spot down. Spot of the foul. Right. So because, yeah. So the DPI, they've just got one yard to gain. They go back to the outside. It's Gomes. A little quick screen, but he's not going to have enough for the first down. Before, I want to go back to that last play. How about Hippen still staying strong in the pocket, knowing that the absolute bull, bulls on parade, Drake Bull, was about to lay a huge hit on him? He's done that several times tonight. The pressure coming right in his face and give him credit for staying in the pocket, keeping his eye on the target, and being able to deliver uh, the ball down the field. Uh, that says a lot about his toughness because a lot of high school quarterbacks, they see that pressure coming. They're trying to bail out, get out of there. Been very impressed with Hippen Steel tonight. Well, the play for Coach Monter, you got to be physical. you got to be tough. And what do I know? That screen pass was good enough for a first town, and the Hawks keep driving. There's another five-yard little out route to Goldsmith and catching again right on him. 
ready to take him down, but enough to make it a second and manageable. Yeah, just get the ball to your playmaker. So now, again, nine minutes left, clock moving. You don't want to take too much time here because you're going to have to get the ball back again. But not a bad decision to throw the ball in Goldsmith's direction. And, and how about the adjustment in the fourth quarter? Kayvon Rivera is still a little banged up. This entire drive, it's been just splits on the outside. You see bunches at the top of the screen, hip and steel. They want the one-on-one -on -one with Goldsmith. It's battled around a little bit, but great defense from Jackson Allison. That ball tip, 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 almost a tip drill. Very fortunate that that one was not caught and taken the other way. So, again, they keep going back to that Wells. Third down. Now the question will be, will they flip it and maybe try to catch Lucy Beckham sleeping with the idea of thinking that they're going to go to Goldsmith again? Well, here comes Kayvon Rivera on command. Got receivers out wide, but Rivera will join hip and steal in the backfield. Look for a run up the middle here. The fresh legs of Rivera. Oh, a little miscommunication. Hippen still looking to make something out of nothing, but he's met by the big fella, Marshall Evans. Rivera on the left, Hippen still on the right. Yeah, definitely miscommunication on that one. I'll tell you what that looks like. That looks like me on a dance floor. Not good for anybody. But as there's another yellow hanky down on the field. We're looking at third and short, and this could be another crucial penalty for the Hawks. That'll back it up. We'll wait and hear from our head officials. I guess they're checking to make sure it's not somebody's second, maybe unsportsmanlike conduct. I was going to say, did you see something that I didn't? I didn't really see any extracurriculars. They just dropped another penalty flag, so I'm not sure if they're going to get maybe two guys after the play. The play was over. Dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct, offense number two. This is number two, second on sportsmanlike conduct, and he has been disqualified. Wow. That's Good a tough break. Gracious. And more importantly, not only is he disqualified, but that penalty backs him up back to the 26-yard line. We talked about the importance of having guys with a little bit of edge, but sometimes you just got to rein in. It was Gomes with kind of that chirpy play at the end of that kick return. That was the first unsportsmanlike. He's going to get hit with a second, and now he's going to have to sit and watch the rest of the fourth. That'll be a rally cry for his teammates. Down a player. You can see here, look at the leadership. That's Matt Kane walking with Landon Gomes. You know Gomes is a senior that this moment means so much to him. Just tempers flared, and now he'll have to sit and cheer and watch as Julius hip and steel, and the rest of his squad approach a fourth and long. And you know, and he feels bad about that, obviously, because he, he got ejected. But at the end of the day, this is a good teaching moment. You have to learn to play with composure. The kid left it all on the field. Just unfortunately, just a little bit too much extracurricular activity. Well, a huge fourth and long, and we're going to take a look on the field and take a break with you at home. The Bengals, a 15-0 lead here in the second half. They lead 28-14 as we're going to take a quick break. We welcome you back into the Low Country. We're going to tell you about maybe the most important part of the night. Here are the results for tonight's Delta Force All Stars Cheer of the Game, sponsored by Delta Force Athletics, home of Delta Force All Stars, proudly cheering on the Low Country's high school sports. What's the poll say? What you got, E? Uh, I got zero to zero right now, so uh, hopefully somebody 
I mean, the visiting team should always win this because most of their fans are watching the game. I was going to say, zero zeros across the board. I got to believe that it's a little technical difficulty on our ends. These ladies have cheered their tails off all night. We saw Trooper Bob on the sidelines with him trying to get yeah. in. You know, obviously to cheer as well. It looked like he was very much so in rhythm. And um, obviously, you joked about it last week. The Beckham Bengal cheer team, they bring like a whole football team. They got 40 girls over there. <laughs> I mean, it looks like they got more cheerleaders than football players right now. Well, it's fourth and long for Hip and Steel on the Hawks. He's trying to escape the pocket, and it's Drake Bull. He knocks that ball loose. Whether it's recovered or not, it won't matter. Drake Bull again in the backfield. A minute 80. A bull in a china shop. Drake Bull forces the turnover on downs. Well, you know, I like my puns. Drake <laughs> Bull with the bull rush that time to knock it out of the hands of Hip and Steel. Give Hip and Steel, he tried to stay in the pocket, tried to find someone to uh, get the football to, but in the end, he just couldn't, had no answer. And as a result, Lucy Beckham, the Bengals, have come across the bridge, and they're eight minutes and 20 seconds away from coming up with their third victory of the year. What would be a 3 0 start? A lot of football left to be played. You got to imagine. Oh, as you see, a little tripped up on the outside. Seagers, he had some room to run. A nice little bull rush up front by number 70, Antoine Mitchell. He's been great on that defensive front. But the message from yeah. Christian Hart, the OC to Chalmers Ballard, got to take care of the football here. Yeah, I think Christian Hart on his play, play uh, sheet, he's probably looking just on the other side where it's just run. Seagers right, Seagers left, Seagers up the middle. When he gets tired of that, bird left, bird right, bird up the middle. <laughs> just work this clock, take as much time off as you possibly can, and let these guys eat. Let the big guys up front eat. Time is now time to run block all the way down the field. They go back to Seager. This time he's going to run up the gut. A great tackle in the backfield by Jay Meadows, middle linebacker. That Mike Backer, he's been so good. Nice tackle. you got to wrap up those ankles when a guy is dangerous and Seager's got the ball in his hands. Well, the one thing you don't want to try and do is tackle Seager's high. Because I can promise you, trying to tackle him around the shoulder, pass, uh, shoulder pads is not something you want to do. That can be detrimental to your health. So it is definitely better to get the ankles. That's exactly what uh, Jay Meadows did on that last play. Let's see what offensive coordinator Christian Hart's got drawn up on third and 12. It's Meadows. He just shoots right up the A-gap. He continues to play, and what a ball. Chalmers bowed to Mason Ombres, and he's got room to run. He crosses it back up the field. A play that looked dead. Ombres, he's still going. It's about a 62-yard gain. A huge play by Bowden. The play looked dead. Third and 12, the Hawks need the ball back, and Ombres escapes for about a 60-yard gain. Yeah, unfortunately, though, there's a penalty flag down at the 40-yard line of Hanahan. Not sure what who the guilty party is but you're right talking again about making something out of nothing what a scramble play and a delivery by lucy beckham now this penalty flag is in the middle of the field about 20 yards removed from the line of scrimmage i'm going to be really curious e, if this is going to be a hold or a block in the back during the run if so the play will be extended or the drive will be extended but if it's a pi this one's coming back well it's got to be during the run because the the ball one down here so yeah they're just going to mark it off from where the penalty occurred which means it should still be a first down for lucy beckham on the offense personal foul illegal blindside block on the penalty is declined illegal block in the back offense number five this penalty is enforced 10 yards from the spot of the foul the play still is in the first step we're going to allow our head official, Kyle Bokowski, who's a lot smarter than us upstairs, take care of the business and understanding the rules. But it was looked like a block yeah. in the back there late. In the and play. it sounds like maybe it were two penalties, and they took the one that obviously would push them back the furthest. So, But, again, getting back to that play, Jack, wow, what a play by the quarterback. Uh, just making something out of nothing. Throwing on the run, found his uh, wide receiver down there just basically right in front of the hand-to-hand -hand bench and then the run after the catch. That was what was so impressive with that play. Well, they go back to Seegers. A little counter to the outside. A little juke. Rothwell. Look at Rothwell. The late push and Seegers. He's got room to run. One man to beat. He's tackled to the outside by Tajay Hartwell. Look at Rothwell flexing over Seegers. 
I'm telling you right now, the play's dead. It was a nine-yard pickup, but Bryce Rothwell almost picks up Seegers and throws him under the 25 yards. Refuse to lose, refuse to go down. I've said it all night long. Steven Seegers is the man. 5'10", 190. That's why you run those hills. That's why you lift and lift and lift. Kept his legs moving. Got a little bit of assistance from his uh, big tight end, Brothwell. But once again, another penalty called against Lucy Beckham. And again, I told you that the head referee, Kyle Bakowski, a lot smarter than I am. I thought the block by Rothwell, maybe they said it was a blocking back because he got the guy behind and he pushed the guy forward. Regardless, an exhilarating play, but it is coming back. As Ballard and the Bengals still have the rocket around the 45. They're looking at a second and five spot. So now some fresh legs in that backfield. you got Charles Bird and Robert Myers in the backfield. Actually, Myers in the backfield. Looks like Bird's going to be in the slot. They go to Myers. It's his first carry of the game. He hits the hole on the outside. And who would have guessed it? Good enough for a first down. We I was about to say, Jack, that's the beauty of when you have a three-headed monster. These are fresh legs of Myers coming in in the fourth quarter to finish this game off. What a luxury Lucy Beckham has in terms of a, a stable of running backs. <laughs> You're spot on. I'm telling you right now, this is their third string running back. He plays safety, so fresh legs in the sense that this is the first time he's gotten the carry tonight. But Myers, 72 yards per game, and he's averaging 10 yards a carry. Yeah. And that's your third string back. They got Charles Bird in the slot. Steven Sears, there are weapons galore in this Christian Hart offense. They go to a little bubble screen. It's Trevor Reynolds for his second catch of the game for about an eight-yard pickup. And right now, it's starting to seem to me that Ballard's just got full control of this offense. Yeah, he does. And he's now kind of in a rhythm, nice short passes. Uh, and guys are doing a great job of yards after a catch. So, again, uh, a nice job of managing this team, not making mistakes, putting the uh, ball in the hands of your playmakers and allowing them to do uh, what they do best, which is running the football. I'd love to see Myers maybe, excuse me, that was Reynolds on the outside, maybe slide to get out of bounds. That clock will stop at 538 in the fourth quarter, but with a two-touchdown lead, the Bengals in full control. This time they do hand to Myers. And it looks like he's going to have four, maybe five. Head, um, head referee at the top of the field. It'll be a left foot, right foot, and it looks like he'll have the first down. And you always want to finish off, you know, with authority and, and send a message and to be able to go on a long, sustained drive, take all the time off the clock, and then cap it off with a touchdown. You best believe that's what uh, Coach Smith and the Bengal coaching staff, that's what they're attempting and wanting to do here in this situation. It's been so tactical, right? I mean, this is just right up their alley. And two, on spot on. I mean, this is going to be our Cruz Chevrolet drive of the game. Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers, just north of Northwoods Mall. you got a friend at Cruz Chevy. And if you're the Bengals, you got a friend in that scoreboard because that clock keeps ticking down and becomes your best friend. Yeah, whether it be big plays, sustainable drives, Lucy Beckham has done it all uh, tonight. And when you have the ability to throw it, to run it, you're very balanced, very hard to prepare defensively a scheme to stop Lucy Beckham. Yeah, they've done a lot of driving tonight. And, again, our drive brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet, where you've got a friend in the car business. Ballard out of the shotgun, second and seven. They go back to the run right up the gut. Met by the big fella. I think that was Jackson Stuckey on the outside. See a couple of hand in hand Hawks. See number 77 there on the attack. That was Rhett Bagwell who's played on both sides of the ball. Gotta commend these guys. It's a hot night and they have battled their tails off in the trenches on both sides of the football. Absolutely. Offensively, defensively, these guys have left it all on the field. And this is what Coach Turner talked about building this program, building this culture. These types of games, you, while you may not win tonight, these types of games will help you win once you get into region play. Oh, look at the fade. They're going for it, and he's got him. Trevor Reynolds, a perfect fade. He had him one-on-one, -on -one. and Chalmers Ballard, sign sealed, delivered. They extend the lead to the 14, and Ballard locked in with his senior, junior receiver, Trevor Reynolds. Okay, take a look here. Nice job. Just a simple uh, catch. Just toss it up, use his height advantage, and as a result, a touchdown pass. 
And once again, this high-powered Lucy Beckham offense on full display tonight, running it, throwing it, anything they've wanted to do, they really have done here in the second half. The one-on-one -on -one fade in the back corner of the end zone from Trevor Reynolds. That touchdown of the season, that might be the nail in the coffin as the Bengals have absolutely dominated here in the second half. A 22 since the beginning of the third quarter. It's preferred home services. Funny Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. As we welcome you back in, we want to show you the Holy City Heating and Air coolest play of the game. We provide solutions for every season. Well, this solution, a little two-point conversion. Yeah, a little trickery on the uh, extra point attempt. You know, normally it's kind of hard to be a Bengal and sneak up on someone, but they snuck <laughs> there. It's pretty cool what Lucy Beckham <laughs> did. Brought to you by Holy City Heating and Air. And there might not be anybody cooler than special teams corner. Jimmy Newton. I, yeah. That was right up his playbook. You know he had something up his sleeve. I mean, you know, those special team coaches, they get fired up about, again, just special teams. So, yeah, that was definitely a, a good play. And at a crucial time because, that remember, that made the game a full uh, seven-point lead that, that they desperately needed. So a good job uh, by Lucy Beckham. And they've lined up in that model huddle spot, forcing the special teams to kind of anticipate it. So you got to reward them for kind of showing all night a little bait and hook. And they switch it at the perfect time. We just showed you the fan cam. I, I too, I, I got to shout out this Hanahan student section. Oh, yeah. The Hanahan community has come out loud and proud. Mount Turner, first year head coach, he's building something really, really important here. Exactly. He'll get more kids out again. I just feel like the second half, uh, Hanahan, the, the size and the physicality of Lucy Beckham just wore uh, Hanahan down. Having guys go both ways, that's sustained, especially when you have these types of running backs and, and linemen going at you. So, But, again, Hanahan has nothing to be ashamed of, not to hang their hats. They competed. They gave it their all. They left it you know, on the field. And, you know, they'll be back next week. And it's still a lot of football left in this season for both teams. You know, and, and they only saw we saw glimpses of Kayvon Rivera, the really talented right. running back. And, and Coach Turner talked about, hey, we, we want to be at our best, playing our best football coverage and play. Yes. That's what it's all about. Exactly. At the end of the day, that's what's going to get you, you know, in terms of playoffs and, and seedings and so forth and so on. So a lot to be uh, learned here from this hand-to-hand -hand team. Watching this film, played a solid first half, didn't play their best in the second half. But again, Hanahan uh, left it all on the field tonight. We told you, it's been a huge run in the second half. The offense has been great. Christian Hart has called a masterful game. If we're looking at potentially a player of the game, I know we've got our graphic coming up. Big. Drake Bull has been spectacular on that defensive front. Yeah, he's kind of been the leader up for uh, Lucy Beckham on that front four. But again, really all those guys up there have done just a phenomenal job. I mean, you, you think about Jaden Moore. You know, you also think about uh, Jaquan Evans. Also, you said uh, uh, Marshall Evans' names a couple of times as well. Those guys have done a phenomenal job of making the adjustments and really shutting out Hannah Hand in the second half. And I think Drake Bull and uh, Jamil Smith, who understands what a really talented defense looks like, he doesn't do it if he can't get in those isolation spots because so much attention is on Jaden Moore and Marshall Evans. And you got to respect the speed from Jay Quan Evans and Tyler Kinlaw at that middle linebacker spot. But the hustle, backside pursuit, we saw that play on the bubble screen. Like Drake Bull has just been all over the football field. Tonight. It's called, called sideline to sideline. you got to chase the ball wherever it is, and that's one thing that I've always appreciated from the two times now that I've seen this Lucy Beckham team. Uh, they always pursue the football. They try to get multiple hats to the ball, and that's why they're one of the top defenses in the low country. 
They pitch it to the outside to Travis Neal. And again, this one's going to go for about a four-yard loss. That Bengal defense swarming to the football, getting there with a bad attitude. Jamel Smith's defense, we said at the halftime, they needed to be laser-focused, and they've delivered. Yeah, I mean, to, take a look there. You got Daniel Fletcher, and you also got uh, Jack LaMonica. Uh, again, just roll call at the football. A lot of white jerseys on that stop. I was going to say, you saw uh, number 18, Pat Lynch, in there as well. Uh, Lynch is a guy, 5'11", 225. Commend what the Bengals have done in the weight room. That's been a huge, crucial element to kind of building this program to be so successful in just year two. And we talked about conditioning at the half, the team that was the better conditioned team and did what they needed to do uh, in the weight room in the summer would win this game, and that's exactly what happened. We've got a little bit of a delay of game. On the punt here from Eric Johnson, special teams has obviously been so integral in tonight's outcome. And it's in every game. We always talk about the three facets, offense, defense, special teams. A lot of teams have lost football games on special teams. And, again, both teams had a little hiccups, but in the end, all in all, a good job by both squads. This is going to be taken at that. Looks like the bang five. We'll tell you, how about the stop of the game? You got anything in mind? The Will Lou Gray never stop learning stop of the game. Never stop learning. I think it's going to be the big sack from Hank Appley. It's got to be. I don't know if you want to call it the Dwight Freeney, the Jadavion <laughs> Clowney, but unfortunately we can't see the spin move. But as you can see, it's like he shot out of a cannon and there to come up with the big sack. So nice job of that time by that Bengal defense led by Hank Appel. And again, that's our Lou Gray stop of the game. Well, Will Lou Gray is going to be proud of that one. We're going to have to put a star next to that one because I'm telling you right now, Hank Apley is a really tough uh, backstop for the Bengal baseball team. But I'm telling you right now, I, the, the shades of the white free, I like the clowny spin move. The textbook, yeah. the hat on ball, boom. That's where we needed that kind of like wide camera angle to show because I it just had to be right at my sight line. And I'm thinking, I don't even think that left tackle moved. That's how quick that spin move was <laughs> to get to the end, uh, obviously to come up with the big sack. I've learned to grow. You know one well. And I almost heard an audible Chris Berman. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looked like. Move. Yep, that was, uh, you know, back in the day, that was an R2. <laughs> you know, when you're playing, uh, playing on a the controller. Yeah, there you go. They don't know nothing about no, it. No, they're like, what's a PlayStation? You know, R2. <laughs> well, we're so old that a PlayStation 5 is kind of the new wave. But I'll tell you what the new wave is. Small ripples and now shock waves yeah. extend through the state of South Carolina. The second year of RC program, the Lucy Beckham Bengals, they're letting these guys know that they're for real at the 4A level. They are sending a message. They are not a team to be slept on. They are going to play hard. They're going to hit you. They're going to run the football. They're going to throw it when they need to. A complete football team, Lucy Beckham is, and they come away with their third consecutive victory of the year. They start the season three, you know. They hadn't given up a point coming in tonight. Thanks to maybe a little bit of a broadcaster jinx upstairs, they give up 14 in the first half. Well, the second half, mistakes, well, they were made. Lessons learned, opportunity to get a little bit better. And Jamel Smith's team is going to head into week five, three and oh. And as we get you settled in before you head out, you got to make sure that you see the Beckham Bengals. We're going to have Trooper Bob on the sideline with our preferred home services player of the game. Go preferred, the company highly referred. And I highly refer that you watch Steven Seegers play football. I know you're a fan. Uh, yeah, Mike Allstart Jr. just running the football high and tight speed. He can run you over. He can run by you. He can run through you. He can do whatever he wants. Steven Seegers is the man. He is our player of the game tonight. And you could, you could give it to a plethora of guys in that backfield, the offensive line up front, but there's a way that he runs. It's all stunt in the way that he runs you over, but the speed, the lightning of Seegers, well, he was dynamite. And in the second half, it was all Bengals. A strong first half showing from the Hawks, but Lucy Beckham, two weeks in a row here with Friday Night Rivals Preferred Home Services, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Trooper Bob's going to be with Jamel Smith and the Bengals as they celebrate their trophy presentation brought to you by All-American Awards. Just cue 
Army. Fourteen, thirteen, yeah. Hey guys, I got it right. I need to get cued because I cannot hear in this um, IFB. I can't, I can't hear anything. So please cue me as I talk to the coach. You want the player coach? Yeah. You want the most? Oh yeah, yeah. This is Abe. I'm about to give you a trick. Bob doesn't hear you. For Bob to get this right, it don't look like it. <laughs> Welcome you back in for the final time here from Hanahan High School and tonight's trophy presentation sponsored by All American Awards, helping Charleston recognize excellence since 1993. Excellence becoming the standard at Lucy Beckham High School, and for the second straight week, we kick you down to Trooper Bob as we hit you with head coach Jamel Smith. Winners twice in a row of this trophy. This presentation brought to you by All-American Awards. All right, we got the player of the game there, number five, Seegers. Great game. Congratulations, along with the rest of your team. Coach, two weeks ago, I saw you there at Wando. We, we talked. You turned it up in the second half, and that's what it looks like you did this game. Yeah, we talked about at halftime just staying laser focused, all right, just getting that laser focus um, for that second half right there. And, I mean, everybody going all out, playing for each other, all right, and just taking care of the little things. We always talk about the little things add up to the big things. And we know if we take care of the little things, the tackling, the effort, the finishing off blocks, good things that happen for us, and that's what we did in the second half. I want to commend two players. I mean, I saw the whole game, but oh, yeah. two, two people that stuck out to me, number 23, and number 32 on defense. Not only did they make the tackles, they are also helping the other players up during this great game. So good, good job to them too. Yeah, they, they, they did a great job. And that's what we're all about. All right? We're not a team that's going to taunt everybody and stuff like that. We're a team that, hey, we're going to get after you, but we're going to help you out. We're going to help you up when we put you on that ground. So this is what Lucy Beckham football is all about. Congratulations on the big win. We got your Friday Night Rivals yes. trophy. <laughs> Hey, we got to keep that we got to keep that camera shot. You don't think this means something to these teams in the low country? Did you see number 10 Chalmers Ballard breaking a move? <laughs> Almost reminiscent of Will Ferrell and Elf. Come on on the coffee table. Hey, that all those fun. guys, it just look at Seegers. You know, I, I rushed for probably 150 yards. You know, not just another night just walks off. But yeah, great great performance by Lucy Beckham. Congratulations to them. And they remain undefeated. You know, Trooper Bobby mentioned number 32 and 29. It's pairing catching Hank Appley, two baseball guys. Well, you can see how the weight room has really transformed a lot of these athletes for this Beckham Bengal team. Drake Bull on that front, Jaden Moore. There are names on this defensive side of the football that really embody what Joe Mel Smith brings to the table. Final thoughts 22 0 run in the second half. This yeah. team, the real deal. Well, I mean, he told us at the, out the half. Hey, we need to focus, lock in, as he just said. That's what his team did. They listen to their coach. They execute. And this is a team that they have a, what it takes on the offensive side of the football, on the defensive side of the football. They have special teams, obviously an outstanding kicker. This is a team that can make a lot of noise and play late into the winter. And for the final time this evening, it was the Lucy Beckham Bengals, a commanding 35-14 to 14 lead. It was all Hawks in the first half, but the Bengals